Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise kindly and move your hats as we honor America and the men and women serving overseas with the singing of our national anthem being performed today by Kristen Sanders. It's the rubber game of the series here in Uptown New Orleans between Tulane and UCF. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. It's Gus Cattengale and Ron Sroboda on an absolutely picture-perfect 81-degree day here in early May, and it's a big one. Both teams, a game out of first place in the American Conference as we headed into this weekend of action. It was a five-way tie between a bunch of teams, Ron Sroboda, South Florida, Houston, 11-6. and six, The wave in the night, one game back at 10-7. and seven. They all mean something now. Yeah, and Tulane, of course, with an incredible win, I thought, against outstanding UCF pitching yesterday. Managed to win it 4-3 to three with some very odd plays that we'll talk about as we go along. But they made today relevant. No doubt UCF, a pretty strong, uh, strong starting lineup as well. Lots of uh, power. Oh yeah, you see not only power; these guys have a you know have a pretty good lineup, and uh, if they get on base, they're gonna they're gonna challenge you. They love to run, and they got a whole bunch of people who can do it. Something we'll be keeping an eye on for sure. Also for the Tulane Green Wave, they got a tremendous starting performance yesterday by J.P. France, 15 in a row. He retired eight strikeouts. They're gonna want a similar performance today from Sam Bionyeld. Yeah, they rode. J.P. France yesterday, like uh, the Kentucky Derby winner, and he was up to all of it. Bjorn Jeld is, um, is a left-hander who's not going to light your eyes up with any of his stuff, but he throws strikes, he uses all of his stuff, and, and he will uh, move the ball around in the zone, keep you off balance. If he's, if he's having a good day, that's what you'll see. Bjorn Yell, 3-3 three three on the season as we get ready to start this rubber game of the series in the first pitch is outside for a ball to Luke Hamblin, the center fielder for the Knights. And the first inning's been tough in this series for the Tulane Green Wave run as Tulane gave up five on Friday, two yesterday, so seven runs total in two games in the first inning. Yeah, this is a very solid UCF team, and if you if you're not pitching to them and making them work at home plate, they can knock you around a little bit. They're largely senior team with a very interesting freshman in the middle of that lineup. Next pitch is fouled away. Two Be balls and a strike. Bjorn Geld, uh, you'll see him right over the top with a four-seam fastball. You know, it's not going to get up there more than 88 or so. Uh, he's got a curveball to go with that and a changeup, as we said. He throws strikes with all of his stuff, and he uses it all. Here's the 2-1. Yeah, is that our high and inside, uh, high and outside, inside as well. <laughs> Kept it in the ballpark. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it looked like a curveball that I just let it get away from him a little bit. Something to keep an eye on here as well. This is the first full week's rest. I was talking uh, 
to some staffers here a little bit ago from Bjornjell. Normally he pitches almost once or twice during a week. Ground ball over to second. Should be the first out of the inning. So it's something to keep an eye on, Ron, to see if you're maybe too much rust. You know, pitchers are funny like that, right? You can have not enough rust and maybe sometimes too much rust. Yeah, they've used him as both a starter and a reliever, but his, uh, you know, he's got five starts. This is his sixth, and it's his fifth in a row. As the two-lane defense is on your screen there, something to keep an eye on as well in this game. Four errors in this inning and Ron opponents are fielding better than the Tulane Green Wave are on their own home field here at Greenfield Turchin Stadium. Yeah and this should not be much of an adjustment for Central Florida. They play on this same kind of surface. The difference you see Bjorngeld standing on an all turf mound. Uh, their mound is dirt at UCF. As, Eli, he, as he gets another breaking ball in there, swing and a miss. Eli Putnam at the plate for the Knights, the right fielder for UCF. Two-lane fielding, 9-7-1. Opponents, 9-7-9 on this field. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? This should not be a tough surface for catching the ball. It's so regular. Uh, the ball gets to you a little quickly, but not too quick. And the hops are always pretty good, depending on how you play them. The ball and the strike. As the next one is fouled straight back. Ran that four-seamer up and in. Yeah, it, 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 you know, both of these teams are excited about the fact that uh, it's a Sunday and this really matters. But nobody more than Tulane who, who, who if they had lost yesterday. Is Ground that ball, right? beautiful play over at third. Hunter Hope up at the throw is going to pull Williams off the base. And, Ron, that's one of those, a good play by the third baseman. But that was deep in that area and almost a base hit. It just got stopped. That's going to be yeah. an easy hit. Well, I'll tell you what. He saved you a base right there. It's a base hit, and there was no way Hunter Hope throws him out at first. But he kept you from two bases right off the get-go with just one out. That'll bring up Brennan Bozeman, a Louisiana native, the shortstop for UCF. Yeah, he's been, uh, you know, LSU probably passed on him when he was coming out of high school in Baton Rouge. He was a small guy, doesn't do anything that lights your eyeballs. But they got him hitting third in the lineup, and that tells you a little something about Bozeman, who is three for eight in this series back in his home state, a 260 hitter as we speak. So the first base run of the afternoon's on base for UCF and Ron. Something we'll keep an eye on. Jonathan Arteegs, the catcher for Tulane. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Is in there for a strike. He's in there right now because Paul Gazzo back on Friday took a foul tip into the chin. He's undergoing concussion protocol. And Arteegs is, is an infielder, now playing catcher. And, oh, by the way, 90 for 101 is UCF. They've only been caught stealing 11 times. They're probably going to test him today as we get a small little blooper over to right that'll be fielded over by Grant Weatherspoon for out number two. Yeah, the way to the way to control their running game for you for UCF is that's a good breaking ball down and in. He inside outs it and Witherspoon in right field handles it easily. The, the way to control their running game would be keep them off the bases because if they get on with or without Jonathan Ortiz behind the plate, a freshman who's learning to play that position. They'll bring up the first baseman, Ryland Thomas, who first pitch pops up over to right field over in the corner in to make the out is Grant Witherspoon. So Tulane gave up five runs in the first inning on Friday, two yesterday, none today. The Wave come the bats in the bottom of the first when we come back on the American Conference Network. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. Welcome back to Greerfield Turchin Stadium. The UCF Knights get a hit in the first, and the Green Wave now will have their opportunity to try to put some runs on the board. Here's their starting lineup, and none better right now than Grant Brown, the center fielder for the Green Wave. Boy, he's been rolling. You know, you look at Brownie, uh, nobody's hotter than him in the lineup in his last 12 games. 
This guy has been on fire. He's 10 for 42, 428 average, 12 RBIs. He was big yesterday in a play in the uh, that should have been a grand slam home run, miscalled by the umpires, and uh, he had to take a double and two RBIs. But you know, here's a guy, and he ends up driving in the winning run in the ball game. His at bats over the last 10 or 12 games have been really solid. He's got a good run going, knows the strike zone, trust in his swing. This and is their left hand. Brown and the rest of the Green Wave will be facing Joseph Sheridan, a left hander, freshman, 321 on the season, 8 and 3 on the year. They call him very pitchable. You know what I mean? You'd say a hitter is pitchable if you can pitch to him. Right. This He has pitchability, this little left-hander. He's 5'11", a freshman from Oviedo, Florida, 8-3 and three on the season. You mentioned a 3-2-1 ERA, and what you'll see from him, fastball that uh, ranges between 86 and 90. He has the ability to add and subtract on it with a real good slider, a cutter he'll use once in a while, and a changeup. There you see the night defense that will get behind him as well. And uh, they're fielding 970 as well. So some pretty good defense. You mentioned similar surface over for them as it is for the Green Wave. As leading for them is right fielder Grant Witherspoon. Lefty versus lefty here to get things going here in the bottom of the first. First pitch swinging. Ground ball over to Bozeman. He'll pick it up and fire across for the first out of the inning. Yeah, three of the top four hitters for two-lane left-handers. Uh, Head coach uh, Travis Jewett deciding not to monkey with that uh, standard lineup for them. So one pitch, one out for the freshman in Sheridan. That'll bring up Lex Kaplan, left fielder for the two-lane green wave. Two for six in this series, uh, 35 RBIs. Kaplan, like a, a couple of the seniors in this lineup, really struggled early in the year, and I think it was a tough adjustment Another first pitch swinging, beautiful diving play by Gellinger over to his left, and he picks it up, and Ron, two pitches, two outs for the Knights there over on the left side of the field. Yeah, I think the lefties are looking for strikes right off the get-go, and they're not up there to take. Nice play. If that gets to the shortstop, Kaplan probably beats it out, but uh, diving, Gellinger really making a good play there. Hunter Williams, the first baseman for Tulane up, has the highest Hitting average on the team for the Green Wave, batting 350 on the year. 35 RBIs, second on the team, 40. DeHart, who's up next, has the most RBIs. And, the right-hander steps up. You can see from the facial hair for these uh, knights of the uh, UCF that uh, their brand-new head coach, uh, Greg Lovelady, uh, came over from Wright State. He is not uh, pushing the hairstyles. Uh, he is... He wants you to be yourself and play the game the right way, and that's all that's important to him. One and one the count after facing the first pitch. Ron, he did not swing after that one, after the first two hitters for Tulane swung at the first pitch, so here's the one-one on him. And this one is grounded over the short. Bozeman, for the second time in the inning, will throw over to first and pick up two of the three outs for UCF. So at the end of one, no score. And we'll come back in the top of the second inning on a gorgeous day here in New Orleans. Tulane UCF on the American Digital Network. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. To see the dream of my son being realized. This doesn't have a price. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When it comes to learning at Tulane University, there are no boundaries. Architects and scientists in New Orleans, doctors and public health experts in Africa, history and language scholars in Latin America, legal students and professors in Europe, business students in Asia. Tulaneans are all over the globe, and the world is their oyster. We've got that, and a lot more, right here at Tulane University. No score at the end of one. UCF won Friday's game. Tulane won yesterday, the rubber series of the matchup. And, Ron, we talked about it coming into this weekend series. Five teams were tied for first place. You look at the conference standings here in the American. 
two are still tied in first place. UCF leading right now as well. Houston there, UCF Tulane right there. Yeah, and two more weekends of conference play. So uh, these games are just maybe not what a head coach wants, but uh, if you're a fan of college baseball and uh, especially the American Conference right now, it's what you want to see. Matthew Micah, the second baseman for the Knights in the hole 0-2 after swing and a miss and a foul tip. Sophomore, Micah, the speed guy in the lineup, in a lineup that loves to run. This guy lives to run. Oh, and a beautiful baby. play, line drive over to Hunter Hope, who goes up a little bit and snags a line drive that would have been for sure a hit. So on it was Micah, but right there was Hunter Hope there. Left it out up over the plate, and that one is heading for left field. It, another one where Kaplan and left would have had to hurry up to keep him from standing on second and base. You mentioned he is 25 stolen bases out of 27. So nice for Tulane to keep him off. But this brings up Kyle Marsh, the left fielder, who fouls off to right his first pitch. Two for seven in the series with three RBIs. The left fielder for them, a sophomore. And those three RBIs came back in Friday's 11-4 win. Marsh from Port Orange, Orange, Florida. Port Orange. You can Port and Orange go with Florida very well. I see what you did there. Second pitch is in the artificial dirt there for a ball. One ball, one (laughs) strike. You know, we touched on it in the open there for two lanes. Seven runs in two first innings of play in this series. How important do you think it was for Sam to get out of there without giving up any runs? And really just for two lane here as he is heading to count one and two. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the struggle for two lane this year has been to find somebody who can keep him around on Sunday. They really thought they had three starting pitchers, um, at least for the weekend. It didn't work out that way. Did he? Home plate umpire. Nope. Checking over to see, and that's Asia Howard, seeing if Sal Giacomantonio over at first base thought. Yeah, easy for you to say. Yeah, you you noticed how slow I said that there (laughs) at first. I asked Todd Graffanini to play by play of the Green Wave if it's his second cousin. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Ball is high and outside, so full count over to Kyle Marsh. Giacomo Antonio? Um, That's a good guess by me. We'll check on that because we don't want to get anybody's name wrong. 3 2 count. Confidence as well is probably a big thing to get going early on. Tulane one and nine on Sundays this year. They've been playing them tough, you know. Um, they, the, the thing with Tulane is stay in the game, and you know, not like game one where you got blown out early. And this was, uh, you know, this was this was a squad. The UCF Knights are not going to they're not going to give you a whole lot. We'll do the 3-2 yet again. Bjorniel delivers, and it's outside for a ball. Second base runner of the afternoon for the Knights as Marsh will get on over to first base, and Bryce Peterson now steps up to get his first at bat of the afternoon. Peterson, 265 on the season. Marsh, one of the guys in this UCF lineup who does not run a whole lot. He's one for one in stolen bases as Bryce Peterson is first at bat in the series as the DH. First pitch swinging is Peterson and swings and a miss. We have one out here in the top of the second. Both teams able to score in the first. UCF in the first did get a hit and had a runner left on base and it was left over on first where they have one now. Pitch is high and outside. Change up. Generally, in college baseball, you'll see right-handers will throw their change-up to left-handers. Lefties, like Bjorn Jout, will throw their change-up to right-handers. Bjorn Jout will throw it to both righties and lefties. Ground ball hits the mound. It's going to get through into center field. Going over to third will be Marsh. As you saw it hit that artificial surface, you mentioned it's not a real dirt surface, and it almost looked like it picked up speed as it hit just to the right of Bjornjeld after he delivers here to see on the replay. Hits yeah, once and just takes yeah. off running, and I think that bounce got past. Uh, Hosey was yeah. making a, a, a diving attempt there. Yeah, he was in full layout, but, you know, balls are going to go through. You hit them halfway decent. Balls will go through this infield in a hurry, and, of course, you're on first base. You're reading that ground ball, so you're underway. 
So Cam Gellinger will come up to the plate, the third baseman for UCF. First bit of trouble here for Sam. As Bjorn Yeld will look. He's driven in three runs in this first two games of this series. First pitch swinging is fouled over to the left side. Gellinger. Cam Gellinger, a senior, third baseman. We talked about that diving play he made in the top of the uh, bottom of the first. That's the way it works in baseball. You make a great play, you get to hit the next inning. Almost always. Yorniel throws over to first. Nothing going there. Not exactly a quick pickoff move. Is that something just to maybe see if Sometimes they're maybe doing a hit and run, a well, bunt or anything? You, you know what? You don't always give them your good move first. You kind of lull them sometimes. Double play depth in the middle of the infield as Ooh. he did square around Gellinger. Showing bunt, it would have been probably um, what they call a safety squeeze. He's trying to get that run in from third base, and uh, but it puts more pressure on the runner at third. He's got to read the bunt and see if it looks propitious. Here's the 1-1, squares around again, pitches mm -hmm. in there for a strike, and over to second without a throw is Peterson, so... Hey, heads up. Wow. I don't know what was being yelled there, but he started to go back to first base after he stole yeah, the Yeah, he was just steps away from second base. Thought that was a, a stolen base there, and then we look back up and... Yep. Now with just one out, I think uh, even with lefty, lefty. Espionio steps off the mound here to reset... So one out here in the top of the second. Knights threatening. They won Friday's series opener. Tulane won yesterday by a run. The Break one, three. two, Woo. down the middle in there for a strike. A little off-speed pitch there. Huge strikeout for Bionyel. Uncle Charlie. That was a curveball up, as you see. But it... Um, it catches the front of the zone, and that's all you need to do as uh, Gellinger with two strikes was taking it. He Asa probably Howard, thought it was going to stay home plate high. umpire giving it to him. Yesterday, First pitch over to Logan Heiser. Yesterday's strike ball zone, ball. I thought. I came out to the ball game, and I thought the strike zone was ample. I'm using that advisedly. It, it, it was a big zone. This one so far looks reasonably generous, but... I think it should be in college baseball. I think he can move the game along. So he's got a chance to get it out and get out of this mess he's in. Next pitch is outside for a ball to Heiser. Logan Heiser, the catcher for the Knights. And you can see just outside. Heiser caught game one. He watched game two. And ball three on the outside here. Luke Hamblin on deck, the center fielder, and more importantly, top of the order for the night. Space hit could get two runs in. Walk would load him up. Eyes are 224 hitter. Somebody you probably should be pitching to. 3 0. Outside corner in there for a strike. So Bionio got the backwards K. A batter ago with runners on second and third. And we talked about the importance of a big start here for the Knights. A base hit can make it 2-0. Uh, a nice pitch by Bjorn Yeld could get him out of the inning. Three balls, one strike. Here's the pitch. And it's outside for a ball, so they'll be loaded as we go back to the top of the order for Luke Hamblin, who grounded out to second back in the first inning. Well, you had two things you're thinking about. And if you're the head coach, Travis Jewett, and you're making all the calls on the pitches, you're you're wondering, does uh, the base open? Uh, you pitch you pitch the catcher, Heiser, in the nine hole, hitting 220-something. You pitch him carefully and lose him. Now you got the leadoff guy, lefty against lefty. Deep, deep at short, second and first for the left-handed batter. And the first pitch is outside for a ball. The home crowd... Not liking the strike zone right now. You have Hunter Hope inside of or middle part of the unofficial dirt area there. So you got about 30 or 40 unofficial umpires, amateur umpires <laughs> right. behind home plate here. And they got a pretty good view of the of the zone. 1-0 is high. Two balls, no strikes. So quickly becomes a hitter's count for Luke Hamblin. 
bases loaded, force at any base, but also if he finds some green, could yeah. give UCF an early lead. You don't get this righty out. You got a couple of uh, lefty out. You're going to have a run of right-handers. The 2-0 is leave, in yeah. there. Where's now, he going? Hamblin he it took off towards first base, saying it hit his right elbow. If it did, he... Third base coach is making his way over there, saying he hit him as well. And we're going to see Greg Lovelady come out of the dugout and try to get an explanation here. Yeah, well, we'll look at the replay. Oh, my. And he certainly didn't try to get out of the way now, of it. I'll say this. Hamblin took off running. I, I had to look down. I'm like, was it ball four? Because you know what I'm saying, Ron? He took off running like. Oh, like it was obvious. Yes. If it hit anything. And the other thing that has to be considered is, did he make any effort to get out of the way of it? There's a closer up look. Does this look like a guy that, that didn't hit him? It doesn't look like it hit him there. No. But again, why would he just take off running? Something that you hadn't really seen before. Anyway, two balls, one strike. We'll reset it. Bionio delivers, and it's high for ball three. So a big pitch here for the two-lane pitcher. Again, having a full seven days rest. Last time he pitched was on Sunday, a week ago. Quickly into the batter's backs, Hamblin. Man, you're at a point where you got to challenge this hitter. 3-1 is high, and a run will come in. Bases loaded, RBI. On the walk. Tried to challenge him up in the zone and uh, missed. So, in this inning, three walks now. You've given up a run, and you're asking for trouble as... Uh, the head coach, Trent Jewett, has something to say. Yeah, coach Jewett quickly coming out to have some words. Well, Probably settle down. Yorn yelled because, again, one run with plenty of innings and plenty of baseball to play is one thing. You definitely don't want to make this, as they say, a crooked inning. Well, you get and a crooked good, numbers in there. And they're, you know, the, the good hitters are coming up. Uh, Eli Putnam, the right fielder, got a base hit over the left. It is first at bat just an inning ago. Stands in there and sees the first pitch, and it's high for a ball. Oh so my. right now, Vionio having trouble finding the strike zone. Yeah, you've got to make an in-game adjustment here in your release point, and that's always a dangerous thing. Putnam sees the wow. second pitch down the middle. Hmm. That one looked to be in the top of the zone right over the plate, but no call. But when, you know, when you're not throwing a lot of strikes and you're looking for a break, you don't get them. When you're throwing a lot of strikes, you're going to get more breaks. The 2-0 swing in the miss by Putnam there. One run's already in on a bases loaded walk. As Tulane gets bullpen action here already, perhaps, again, the importance of J.P. France going eight innings yesterday is you didn't have to go to your pen yesterday, so Coach Jewett has some fresher arms. Here's the 2-1 outside corner nice. for a strike. So two balls, two strikes by Yonio. Not over yet. As I said, you're in the meat of the order for UCF. A big pitch for both teams here. For the Knights, a base hit could add to their one-run lead. For the Green Wave, it could just keep it to a one-run lead. Here's the pitch. It's fouled straight back into the netting. Made a good pitch. Got that fastball by him. You could see him working his hands in to get some fat bat on that ball. Eli Putnam. Now Putnam batting 322, Ron, but also... High number of strikeouts, 46. As he sees well, here you go. another pitch we got called the ball. The action pitch, they call it. Uh, Runners will be going with two outs. Three balls, two strikes. So a bit of a head start here. Again, anything that gets through will easily score two runs for UCF. 3-2. Oh, my. Down and another bases loaded walk. You know, you throw between starts, and you get your work in during the inning. And, and uh, 
I asked you when we started the game here as well, the fact that he had seven full days. Normally he's been pitching during the midweek games here as well. I just wonder how pitchers respond to that. Brennan Bozeman flied out to right his first plate appearance. First pitch to him is another ball. I think the right-hander Seleski throwing in the pin of freshman. I think. Four walks in the inning by Bjorn Yeld. As Bozeman's ahead in this count, one ball, no strikes. Outside corner in there for a strike. Knights lead 2-0. Again, both UCF and Tulane, one game out of the American Conference standings in first place. USF leading right now. Houston also tied with them at 11-6. and six. Yeah, And that ball is outside for ball. And, Ron, we're at over 50 pitches for Bjorn Yield, 51 in the, the second inning. There's some... Triple-A franchises. I do a lot of triple-A games here for the baby kicks in New Orleans. Uh, Ground ball over to short. Be a big play for Hosey. If he can get him over to first, he decides to go, and they're in time. So Tulane manages to keep UCF just to two runs. Four walks in the inning for Bjorn Yeld. Green Wave looking to respond in the bottom of the second here when we come back on the Dig American Digital Network. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. To see the dream of my son being realized. This has no price. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When it comes to learning at Tulane University, there are no boundaries. Architects and scientists in New Orleans, doctors and public health experts in Africa, history and language scholars in Latin America, legal students and professors in Europe, business students in Asia. Tulaneans are all over the globe, and the world is their oyster. We've got that, and a lot more, right here at Tulane University. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. Fifty-one pitches for Bjorn Yeld, 52 with the ground ball to short to get him out of the inning. As for UCF, who lead 2-0, Ron Joseph Sheridan, not so many pitches needed in his first inning of work. Tulane, first two batters, first pitch swinging, two outs. Yeah, Joe Sheridan probably wanted to go down to the pen and warm up again uh, in the middle of that uh, last inning with all the ball fours. The eight hitters to the plate, and you only scored pitches. two runs. Yeah, he well, he didn't. <laughs> right. He hardly broke a sweat <laughs> and starts out ball one. You get rid of Jared DeHart, the senior DH for the Tulane Green Wave, and then you hit the right-handed portion of the lineup. And DeHart ahead in the count 2-0 here. If you walk him, you've got a whole bunch of righties coming up against the lefty. The heart asking for time, and it's given to oh, him, still <laughs> throwing the pitch down. You always hear that a lot, that when that happens, pitchers, you don't want to just stop, right? You don't want to follow through with the delivery. Right. Don't hurt yourself. But we're quickly back into action, and this one's popped up in the left field. A couple steps back is Marsh under it, and we'll track it down for out number one. Very, very few clouds, if at any. More like puffs of Little. smoke, what they look like on a gorgeous blue sky. 81 degrees, low humidity here, sun. which is not the norm, Ron, in New sun Orleans. Sun is high in the sky. Yeah, today, it's a beautiful day. No wind to speak of, so you're going to have to hit it to get it. There's nothing going to blow out of here. Grant Brown now at the plate for the two-lane green wave, the center fielder. A big day yesterday, and he's been hot as of late. Yeah, he's 
really commanded the strike zone. He looks patient to me, um, and he's handled breaking balls, at least bad breaking balls. He used to be, you spin it and he's done. Um, but he's looked like a guy that's uh, come to trust his swing a little bit. It's a good one. He's strong. He hit that ball yesterday. Should have been a grand slam home run. Missed called by the umpires. It showed on replay. Hmm. Later on, we saw it. They just missed the call, and that, of course, had a lot to do with this game. And there's Brown one. this one over to right. The wind's taking it. Wind's taking it, and it's out of here. Home run by Grant Brown as he continues his hot streak as that one looked like a fly ball to right. And, Ron, as we say that, the flag's starting to blow a little bit from left to right. It caught, I guess, a bit of that wind stream as it kept going and going, and we kept seeing Putnam take some steps towards the warning track and it just got over that yellow marker. Not by much, but it counts. Well, two lane on the board, 2-1 on the Grant Brown home run. Well, that's his fourth home run of the year, but he, this this power is coming suddenly from a guy who, it's not that he's gotten any stronger. What he's gotten is more efficient at home plate. He's swinging at strikes and he's making contact and I think he believes now and it's uh, it's something to watch. Hunter Hope, the third baseman for the Green Wave, batting 217 on the season now, steps up, the right-hander. First pitch to him is high and outside as well. Hope hit a hunt home run yesterday, made it a 3-2 game. UCF uh, put a, a run on the board and tied it at three before Brown won it with a two-out base hit. Fouled off for a strike, again on the outside corner there. Seeing a, a lot of Sheridan attacking that outside. You mentioned, Brown, when you're hot, you just you kind of take what pitches go as well. That was a pitch on the outside corner. He stayed with it, and he drove it to right. Well, look, he's a guy who can nibble. And um, if you're going to swing at pitches where he's nibbling on the corner early in the count, he's going to wear you out because he looks like a command kind of guy. Sheridan looks like a guy that has an idea where it's going. Well, he came in with a beautiful fastball there and tied up Hunter Hope. I think he was looking outside, so that maybe sets up the outside part of the plate here. See what the catcher Heiser does, and he goes low, and a beautiful pitch disappears. Swing and a miss, so after giving up the home run, Sheridan comes back with a strikeout of Hunter Hope. Jake Wilsey now at the plate, the second baseman. It's a little slider, and it's a pretty good one. Um, get, you get it under the right-hander's hands like that, and it had a lot of bite. I don't know if I'm more impressed with the pitch or Logan Heiser's split back there. He was completely on the ground. He is um, awfully <laughs> ad agile and flexible. Right. No doubt about it. Jake Wilsey, the second baseman for the Green Wave. First pitch inside there for a strike. Wilsey, one of the seniors uh, who struggled this year um, offensively. And, uh, you know, you... you you're in the last chance as a as a college player, and Wilsey, a guy, you know, he's not going to hit 340 for you, but uh, if he was hitting 250, you'd be happy, um, and he'd be a lot happier, too, than uh, sitting there at 212, and he was under two bills for an awful lot of this year, so everything is kind of awakened here at, at Tulane. A 1-1 one -one swing and a miss, UCF. Top of this inning, getting four walks, a couple of bases loaded walks. That's how to get there, two runs. Grant Brown just homered to right to give Tulane their single run. You'll see a cutter come out of Sheridan's hands also. This one snubbed just over and stays to the out. right side of the foul line, and they will Ooh. let it go and in, touch it as Wilsey runs past it. Pretty good read on how level that first baseline is. If now that again, ball goes... Yeah. You touch this as an artificial surface, you're not going to have the little bumps or pebbles or pieces of the dirt. If it pretty much stays in one way, it's going to go one direction. Well, you, you know, it's, it's been known that uh, certain teams with dirt diamonds would uh, bevel that first baseline in a way that's advantageous. If you have no speed, you want everything to go foul. If you've got a little speed and guys that can bunt, you want it to be fair. Here... You have what you have, and it's flat. Next pitch is swung straight back. Little groundskeeping tip there from Ron Svoboda. <laughs> there you go. You only cheat if it's good for you. <laughs> <laughs> One ball, two strikes. The delivery inside. 
I guess a little low there for a home plate umpire, Asia Howard. Again, mm -hmm. the set by Logan Heiser sets low in the mitt, and it was. It wow. was just below the knees. Maybe that was one of those times where the catcher was a little too low in I'd, setting up. I'd say Sheridan wants it. 2-2. Two -two. Swung on. Chopper to third. Coming in quickly as Gellinger across the diamond. Not in time. Says first place umpire Sal Gia Antonio. Did I do that one better? Yeah. Well, you uh, know going what? going with it, right? In that, I don't know, Jaka Antonio. A little slow roller as the third baseman's back. He double pumps, and that makes the difference. Wilsey and beats indeed. it out. Good call by, by Sal yeah. over at first. So, if he comes up cleanly with it, we were mentioning facial hair is okay at UCF. Just do what you need to do as a student and an athlete, and you won't have any trouble with Greg Lovelady, the head coach. Shortstop Cody Hosey. Hosey, a freshman. Lines foul over there on the third base side. Two freshmen at the end of this order, Cody Hosey and then Jonathan Ortiz, the catcher. He's on deck. You see him there, number three, in that shot. Yeah, these guys have been uh, good finds for them. Um, Hosey has kind of settled that position down. You can't play baseball without a shortstop making the plays for you, okay? You put somebody out there who's dangerous and... Uh... Hosey puts a charge into this one, but it'll go foul over what they call the hit shack or the hack shack. Team's hitting facility over there on the left where the batting cages are. Hosey at 215, but you know, as a freshman, uh, just trying to find himself at this level of ball... He's, he's really hung in there. He's a decent contact hitter. But I think he's a guy that you're going to see grow in this program. I feel like his swing is pretty fundamentally sound. Sheridan with the 0-2 inside on the hands has followed the way. Over at first base yep. is Jake Wilsey. Five steals out of seven attempts. Really, Tulane, not a team that likes to run or a does run, Ron. Uh, Grant Witherspoon is the lead high in ten. The next is five with Jake Wilsey in a couple of three. So it's not it is not the UCF Knights for sure. No. Two to one, your score. All three runs. Oh. Ooh, almost good. got him there at good first. Move. Good move. Got that good hesitation, and uh, that's a good left-handed move, which is always a little bit well, close to a leaning towards second. Well, you're supposed to get at least on a 45-degree angle, you know, from first base and home. Mm -hmm. Get that front foot down there, but but that good hesitation where you, you kind of cheat a little, and, and usually you have to cheat a little to have a pretty good move to first base. So Bjorn Yeld had a long second inning now. Sheridan having a bit of a work here in yeah. the bottom of the second as he's up to now 26 pitches. Bjorn Yeldo over 50. Yeah, I, I'm not sure, sure if he wasn't one more walk away from adios. The fact that Grant Brown put the wave on the board here and it makes it just a one-run game, do you send them back out there to third? Well, the right-hander is not loosening up in the pen. I'm going to say, yeah, Bjorn Yeldo will get another shot at it if he has any trouble with command. Uh, he's done. Here's the one, two. Swung on, popped up. Looks to stay in play. Heiser makes the catch to retire the side in the inning. Got two hits. One was the big one. Grant Brown, home run over to right field. Wave still trail, two to one. Top of the third coming up next on the American Digital Network. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. To ver o sonho meu do meu filho sendo realizado, isso não tem preço. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When it comes to learning at Tulane University, there are no boundaries. Architects and scientists in New Orleans, 
doctors and public health experts in Africa, history and language scholars in Latin America, legal students and professors in Europe, business students in Asia. Tulanians are all over the globe, and the world is their oyster. We've got that, and a lot more, right here at Tulane University. No runs in the first inning. All three runs scored by both teams coming in the second. Two by the Knights coming off of four walks. Two happen with the bases loaded. And a home run by Grant Brown there makes it two to one. Sammy on yelled with over 50 pitches as we suspected Ron Soboda indeed will start the top of the third inning as action continues now in the two-lane bullpen. So maybe to your point, let's see how he starts. Coach Travis Jewett says... Here against Rylan Thomas, first pitch swinging in its pop-up. Brand's going to have to make a go at it here into the angry wave silhouette over in center field, and he makes the catch there as the wind, the wind kind of stopped it from going well, there. And the sun is uh, straight up more to the left field side, as you can see from the shadows. And really, as Grant Brown comes, that ball's getting in the sun a little bit. He's, he's having to struggle with it a little bit, but uh, makes the play. Now Micah, first pitch in there for a strike to him. So to your point, you go see what he can do. And if he has any trouble, you already have that arm ready to go in the bullpen for the green wave. Again, four walks last half inning for Bjorn Yeld here. One ball, one strike. Yeah, I, I had the feeling if he had uh, the pen ready, uh, Bjorn Yeld would have been history. But, um, you know, if you settle down and throw some quality strikes, you know, he's a guy that's stretched out. And now, on a beautiful day, you know, he's had a chance to sit down and well, rest a little bit. we talked about it. Bit. He's been used to pitching on the weekend and then midweek. Yeah. So this is the first time all season he's had seven days rest as it's lined into left field. Micah with a base hit in between short and third. Now, here's a guy you have to watch a little bit. He's the runner on a team full of runners. He is the man. It's a pretty good breaking ball here that Micah really centers up. And hits it hard through the left side. 25 for 27 on the stolen bases, Micah. <laughs> so you know you got to watch him. And again, Artigues, the catcher for the green wave, an infielder converted catcher. Nice frame job there. Gets a strike on the left fielder for UCF, Kyle Marsh. Interesting to see when UCF will attempt to test Artigues and Bjorn Yeld trying to help out his catcher going over to first. I've not seen anything from Bjorn Yeld that looks like um, that looks like a, a classic move to first base. He's it's just kind of I see you. I'm going to throw here, and uh, you maybe know, also I, trying I, to see if a bunt I'm could trying be to read it in like play a, here from uh, Coach with two outs. Love I, I mean, one out. I think you're and indeed, wow, Marsh did square That's, out. Interesting. Would they bunt and run? No. Um, you know what I mean? Try to bunt them all the way over to third. But One ball, one strike. 283 on the season for Marsh. As again, Bionio for the third time throws over to first base. Yeah, that's not a pickoff move. That's so a, a bit of uh, maybe trying to feel each other out between Coach Jewett and Coach Lovelady here. Yeah. That always happens. The mound he delivers, popped up to center, right center, Brown going back. Also Witherspoon, he's going to track it down. Fields it over his shoulder. And to second base on the tag is Micah showing that speed run. So he does get to second, but the Green Wave do pick up an out. Yeah, that that's, that's a base you don't get unless you have good speed. And he got a good read on the ball. It was clearly a catchable ball. So and he had the right fielder going away from second base as well. And to his glove side, a lot harder throw right, to well make. They will They'll make the check appeal. over at first. Nope. You that's, see that ball kind of. That's not a sacrifice, but watch Witherspoon here. He's drifting a little yeah. bit. You know, the only thing he could have done was get back a little quicker. And he's a lefty, so you're going away. All your momentum's going away from second base. A good read by Micah. So a base hit by Bryce Peterson could make it a two-run lead yet again for UCF. They lead 2-1 to one here in the top of the third. Two out. Ground ball over to third. Beautiful play over by Hope. Can he get him in time? Across. It did, but it gets through Hunter Williams, and it's going to be a run for the Knights. Would have been an out and out of the inning. But the ball in the ground 
could not be caught there by Hunter Williams. Yeah, I was, um, you know, play like that, you just knowing that there's a runner coming around, and, and this is a tough play. This is a great play by the third baseman. You know, and he comes up and he gives him one. But it's an in-between hop, and it's one of those where you would you you would hope he'd get his body in front of it. But it hopped up high, it skimmed up, and uh, and went off the glove of uh, Hunter Williams at first. Squaring away to bunt is Cam Gellinger, but he pulls it back, so it could have gotten out of the inning. But indeed, it is another run for UCF as another error by the two-lane Green Wave. Ron, we touched on it at the top of the broadcast. Two errors on Friday, two errors yesterday, four in the series as well. And teams are feeling better than Tulane in their home park here uh, as they've had a struggle. If you go back the, the last two weeks, two and a half, three weeks, almost every game Tulane has at least one error. It's and there's a line shot over to right field. And this is probably going to bring in another run being waved into score. Here's the relay. Uh, and it's high. And it's going to be... Back over to second, safe there, as Peterson will come in to score, as Cam Gellinger doubles over in the right field. Yeah, he, he was out by a whole bunch, if it's even a halfway decent throw from the relay man, Jake Wilsey. Wilsey airmailed it over the catcher, Ortiz, on a play where if he just makes a decent throw, he's out. So uh, that's going to be all for Bjorn Joe. And here comes Coach. He'll make a pitching change. As UCF now leads 4-1, to one, again, could have gotten out of the inning. There was an escape route for the two-lane greenway, but it didn't happen. So Bjorn Yeld will exit the game. And when we come back, we'll tell you who the new pitcher will be for the two-lane green wave. Four to one, top of the third on the American Digital Network. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. To see the dream of my child being realized. This doesn't have a price. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. When it comes to learning at Tulane University, there are no boundaries. Architects and scientists in New Orleans, doctors and public health experts in Africa, history and language scholars in Latin America, legal students and professors in Europe, business students in Asia. Tulaneans are all over the globe, and the world is their oyster. We've got that, and a lot more, right here at Tulane University. The afternoon is over for Sam Bionniel. Two and two-thirds innings pitch, five hits, four runs, three of them earned, four walks, and a strikeout. Ron Strabota, Chase Seleski, the new pitcher for the Green Wave. Yeah, he's been a godsend from Florida, interestingly enough, out around Fort Pierce, Florida. He's a freshman right-hander, a kid that pitches with a lot of gumption. I mean, when you see his stuff, you go, he's got a mid-'80s fastball that doesn't scare anybody, but he commands it, moves it in and out. He's got a curveball behind that and a changeup. He'll use his stuff, and he's been able to pitch with confidence for a team that really needed another guy. He's got some movement on his fastball, and he uses that to his advantage. But, you know, the thing that was thin for the green wave with Trent Jewett coming into his first year as head coach, and interesting, we got two first head coaches. There's his curveball in there for a strike. But this is a kid that, with confidence, 
He'll pitch to contact, and uh, you got to play some defense behind him, and that's at times been a, a struggle for Logan Tulane. Heiser, catcher for UCF at the plate. In the hole 0-2, here it is, and he stays with it. It's going to get right past Hunter Williams down the right field line. Another run's going to come in and score. Rounding third in over the plate is Gellinger, and in to second with back-to-back -back doubles is Logan Heiser, and UCF blowing open here. The third. That's the unbelievable. Inning. He threw him a breaking ball that was probably off the plate outside. Heiser rakes it by the first baseman. What a great piece of hitting there. Back-to-back -back doubles hurting the two-lane green wave all with two outs, and you go back to it. We set it at the top of the game run. Four arrows in two games two apiece. It's been a problem for the two-lane defense. Could have gotten out the inning instead. Since then, three runs have come across. Yeah, you could have helped yourself. And uh, when it doesn't happen, you're letting a team that can swing the bats a little bit uh, get up there and do some more damage. Luke Hamblin, top of the order for the Knights. Looks at a pitch on the outside corner in there for a strike. Even the count up at one ball and one strike. Top of the third. UCF got two runs on four walks. Two of them came on bases loaded. Situations in the second inning. Tulane got a homer by Grant Brown to make it 2-1. And here in the third, three runs have plated. And another in scoring position at second. Swing and a miss by Hamblin, who was trying to make this a 7-1 game over to right field. That's where Brown's homer went. That fastball threw by him right there. The old mano a mano there. Well, you know, locate the fastball when you've shown them something else, and you can get away with mid to upper 80s. That was a changeup off the plate. Good look by the hitter, Hamblin. So two balls and two strikes. Hamblin grounded out in the first, walked in the second. Looks at a pitch outside for a ball. So three balls and two strikes. And Bjorn yelled, we, we asked out loud, first time all season he's pitched on seven days rest. Some pitchers it's good. Well, he's he's been successful as a relief pitcher, and that's that's an odd schedule. Um, I, I wouldn't blame this on the schedule. Um Swung on and a base hit into right. Another run coming around third. Picking it up is Witherspoon. Play at the plate. Not in time. And advancing to second on the throw is Hamblin. Back to back to back. RBI hits two doubles and a single for UCF as it is now six to one. I had a chance to get him. That would have been a great catch and throw by the right fielder Witherspoon throws up the line a little bit again we mentioned it when we showed the lineup at the opening of the broadcast Ron this is a dangerous and a very good UCF team they do not need help and all of this is coming with two outs baseball's forever and right now UCF is Putnam decides to bunt down the line this is going to be a beautiful play <laughs> as a base hit happens and that's a situation that maybe things are not going your way and Hunter Hope no shot at that as he was just trotting to that ball. A well-placed bunt. This is as good as it gets. Call it surprise. Well, yeah, I'm not a great big fan of, uh, of two-out bunts when you're the two-hole hitter. But you do get Bozeman up there, who's 0 for 2. Uh, you're not going to drive a guy in from second base, bunting down the third baseline, but... And Bozeman first pitch swinging into left field. Another run in, and the inning continues to be a nightmare for the Green Wave. And UCF right now is batting practice, Ron. It is um, quickly running away. Uh, the bunt gets a hitter up there who was ready, and that fastball right out over the plate. We mentioned that this is not a fastball that, uh, well, it was a little moving towards the inside, but it's mid-80s fastball, and he seemed to be looking for it, and this is a good fastball hitting team, by the way. And you know, Tulane getting more work over in the bullpen. Yeah, it's a team's won 32 games this year, lost 15. Uh, the Keegan Knights Gillis, at UCF, you number know. 35, Keegan Gillis, making his way out there to try to get 
loose as well yes. as, Chales as Celeski, Chase Celeski in there for a strike right now. As Tenth hitter up in yeah. this inning. Ryland Thomas led things off this inning with a fly out to center. Getting another chance. Never a good thing. For the oh. team on the field when the batter that led things off is back in there. Pretty good hack at that fastball by Ryan Thomas. Ryland Thomas. Only about 5'10, 5'11. The 0 2, it's into left center. Brown making a run at it and will track things down and mercifully ends the inning for the Tulane Green Wave. But for the UCF Knights, they get a huge inning. Five runs, seven to one they lead going to the bottom of the third. Tulane to bat on the American Digital Network. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. To see the dream of my child being realized, it's not a price. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When it comes to learning at Tulane University, there are no boundaries. Architects and scientists in New Orleans, doctors and public health experts in Africa, history and language scholars in Latin America, legal students and professors in Europe, business students in Asia. Tulaneans are all over the globe, and the world is their oyster. We've got that, and a lot more, right here at Tulane University. Come back to New Orleans, a rubber series or rubber game of the series between UCF and Tulane. Seven to one, UCF exploding with five runs in the third inning. And a Tulane Green Wave will wow. look to respond as well, Ron. You and I during the break there were hmm. having to try to count all the many hits there. And again, most of the damage coming with two outs. And it was the era. Once again, Hunter Hope fielding a Nice play over at third. His throw to first bounced. Hunter Williams unable to corral it. And after that, it was one, two, three, four runs that came in to score. Yeah, you know, against a good club, you crack a little defensively. And uh, they're feeling pretty good, feeling easy with their swings. And Artigues grounds over to short for the first out of the inning in his first plate appearance. You know, all of a sudden UCF gets real comfortable knowing, hey, we put up a few runs. Let's just relax. Let this happen. I think if you were to stack these programs up against one another, UCF is a little better team. Their pitching is certainly better, um, and they've relied on that this year. But they also have a lineup that uh, when you've got a pitch to them, they're going to hurt you. First pitch swinging by Witherspoon. Hot shot over the second, but picked up by Micah. And quickly, two outs. Hard out, but nevertheless an out. He hit this one pretty good. He threw him a breaking ball, kind of a cutter slider thing on one hop. Backhanded pretty by play. Mika. Really good play. Do you see him take a little curtsy there? Yeah, for sure. Alex Kaplan. They're loose now, aren't they? <laughs> the Knights. Five run innings will do that for you. Yes, it will. <laughs> Yes, it will. Lex Kaplan grounded out to third. His first plate appearance, first pitch to him is outside for a ball. You know, and if you're a pitcher, this this kid is a pretty good pitcher out there, Joseph Sherman. And now he knows if I throw strikes, you know, you don't have to be as fine. Another ground ball over to Micah. We'll backhand it right in front of him. Two of the three outs go to second base and a quick one, two, three inning for UCF. So we come to the end of three and it's the Knights with a six run lead at seven to one on the American Digital Network. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. To see the dream of 
meu, do meu filho, sendo realizado. Isso não tem preço. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When it comes to learning at Tulane University, there are no boundaries. Architects and scientists in New Orleans, doctors and public health experts in Africa, history and language scholars in Latin America, legal students and professors in Europe, business students in Asia. Tulaneans are all over the globe, and the world is their oyster. We've got that, and a lot more, right here at Tulane University. Welcome back to New Orleans. UCF leads it 7-1. to one. Ron Strabona, Gus Kattengel with you here as, again, only two weekend series remain, Ron. And for the Tulane Green Wave, you're hosting Houston, who's tied for first place right now with South Florida. And then you're at Memphis for the Knights uh, in the middle of a handful or so of games on the road. They won't play again until May 18th at home against South Florida. They're at Miami midweek game coming up on Wednesday, then at Cincinnati for the weekend. Midweek game against Florida Atlantic and then host South Florida to wrap up the regular season at home. Uh, Seleski is back there out on the mound. First pitch is a ball over to Matthew Micah, who uh, I guess wanted a workout over at second base last half inning. Two of the three outs going there. He fouls this one off. If two lanes in, in maximum hang in there right now because you just you just had yourself uh, kicked around a little bit and a team that is hard to score on to begin with uh, with a pretty good arm out on the mound for them and, and you are down 7-1. to one. You need six just to tie this thing. Seleski needs to hold him there and give uh, the Green Wave a little bit of and a swing, a strikeout rather, without swinging. Took a fastball, outer edge. So they'll bring out Marsh, who scored in the second, got oh. on base via a walk. Exactly Four right walks down. in that inning, by the way. Yeah. You helped in a lot of ways. I mean, to give him a five spot, you, Tulane helped in a lot of ways. Marsh pops this one over to right. Witherspoon under it, tracking it. He'll make the catch for the second out of the inning. You think Travis Jewett, the head coach of the Tulane Green Wave, would love to see a 1-2-3 inning here to settle things down? Yeah, you don't want to, you know, get into next year mode with two more weekend series to go, but... You, you, you won a heck of a game yesterday that uh, if you had looked at the quality of the pitching that the Greenway put four runs up against, which turned out to be enough because J.P. France was a hoss. This will get over the pitcher being tracked by Wilsey. Makes the play in time over at first to retire the side. One, two, three, the first time today at two lanes retired the Knights in order. Much needed quick inning for the Wave pitching staff. Can the bats come alive? Knights lead it 7-1 on the American Digital Network. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. De ver o sonho meu do meu filho sendo realizado. Isso não tem preço. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When it comes to learning at Tulane University, there are no boundaries. Architects and scientists in New Orleans, doctors and public health experts in Africa, history and language scholars in Latin America, legal students and professors in Europe, business students in Asia. Tulaneans are all over the globe. And the world is their oyster. We've got that and a lot more right here at Tulane University. Absolutely gorgeous day at first pitch at 1 o'clock here, central time. It was 81 degrees. Jazz Fest just down the road taking place, Ron Swoboda. Closing today, yeah. 
Beautiful baseball weather for sure. It's not very often that you have low humidity, cool temps in the morning in early May anywhere in the south, as the folks in Orlando know as well uh, when it comes to UCF. Yeah, I feel like those of us living in New Orleans are uh, we're building up a large bill we may have to pay later as you know you just saw what Hunter Williams went up there and swung at a ball way out of the strike zone like he was trying to hit a eight run home run and that never works uh, you, you really have to concentrate here and hope Seleski can hold him and put quality at bats up there now that was a better pitch than he swung at number one and that's what you have to tell yourself look Let's be efficient. Let's swing at strikes. Let's try to just do what we can do and hang in there because you're going to need some help anyway. Hunter, Hunter Williams involved in the play that we'll look back at. Two outs. Hope made a play over at third diving stop. Williams unable to corral it, and he swings in a miss here, and he'll be thrown out over at first as in time. Heiser to and Thomas. And that was with two outs, Ron, and then after that, I'm not a sure. bunch of runs came across there. I'm not sure. After that. Hunter Williams swung at a strike there, but you're right. Hunter. Look, well, you wonder he, if that's in your mind. You know, try to make well, up these, for it, because in his mind, you know, he should have had it. And you forget. wonder if that translates over to the plate as the designated hitter, Jarrett DeHart, steps up. Well, you'd like to say, hey, maybe they're in the middle of really, you know, Hunter Williams is a 4-0 student in the middle of, uh, in the middle of uh, exams. You know, you're you're like, hmm, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> All these guys are in the middle of exams yeah. on both teams. And a swing and a miss there by DeHart, who was trying to hit a home over to right there with that swing. Grant Brown, responsible for the lone run for the green wave today. Yeah, you really have to be very patient early in the count. And figure out where you want that pitch to be and, and, and really try to work harder to make him get in a position where he has to throw you strikes. If the heart will lift this one over to left field as Marsh will track that one for the second out in the inning. So, again, first two batters for Tulane. And that'll bring up Grant Brown. Homered in the second. And Ron, this was taking the pitch and putting it somewhere. Well, he got, look where the pitch was. Um, he got a good pitch to swing at and put a pretty good swing on it. Uh, so, unfortunately, um, you can't be a one-man show in a 7-1 ball game. You need, you need some of your boys along. That was in the second inning, and um, there you go. Watch Grant Brown's at-bat and see if he does what we said in that he's been patient getting good pitches to swing at. And early in the count, He's ahead a ball. All right, he took a strike, but I'm going to tell you, that's a quality strike, low in a way. Um, a hard ball to hit if you swung at it. You're only one and one now. That's how, how you, if, if it continues, that's how you work a count. Sheridan inside for a ball here. Two balls, one strike. Had a bit of trouble in that second run, but since then, uh, I wouldn't even say really settles down. Uh, he gave up that one run. It was earned, obviously, a home run. Two hits, no walks in the game, two yeah. strikeouts. That was trouble with a small case T. Right. Um, and Brown puts a charge, but it goes hmm. right into Gellinger, who fields it on one knee. The wow. hop is fielded by Thomas. Beautiful play by the first baseman of the Knights. And one, two, three. Go the two-lane green wave. At the end of four. UCF 7, Tulane 1 on the American Digital Network. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. To see the dream of my son being realized. This doesn't have a price. 
the labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. The beginning of this weekend, we had five teams. Gus Cattengill, Ron Sroboda with you in a first place tie, nine and six in conference play. Tulane UCF splitting so far the first two games. South Florida and Houston run won their first two games, and right now it's UConn over at Houston leading one nothing in the fifth, and ECU trailing South Florida six to two. As here we are seven one the Knights top of the fifth inning. It's Cam Gellinger getting that last out. And I got to say, probably a very envious beer. <laughs> he's got one going for um, That would a young take man. me years. Well, he's years. a senior, so he's probably 21, 22, you know. He's swung on and fouled on ball two strikes. A little short swing. Pretty good hitter. That might be thicker and longer than James Harden. I'm not a great big fan of, uh, no? of that sort of beard action, you know. Um, <laughs> works okay on uh, Duck Dynasty out in the woods somewhere. I think but... they'd be impressed by that one here as well as Gellinger. Yeah. Evens in the count here. Two balls, two strikes. Seleski still on a mound for the two-lane green wave. And a little it's curious to me because I'm a cultural fan, okay? Right. It's curious to me in the age of, uh, you know, um, the Taliban and, uh, and ISIS uh, that also in America and American baseball, these full beards have, uh, have gained favor with a few guys. It's just interesting to me. Ellinger pops it up, making a chase and run at it is Hunter Hope, but it will go just on the other side of the netting there. So we'll but do it uh, again. style is what style is. Um, and uh, guys that like them, I guess they like them. What was the style of your I don't, I don't know day? any women that like full beards like that, and that's what I can't understand. <clears throat> when we were playing, you short, you Gallinger short hair. Lines this one over to left. Kaplan will track that one down. One. Well struck. We're out number one. Well struck by the bearded one. <laughs> Logan Heiser, the catcher. Say this, that was consistent at bat there. The pitch is on the outside part of the plate, and Gellinger didn't try to do anything but to go with those pitches. You remember when radical, radical liberals wore beards? Now it's, it tends to be more conservatives wearing beards. Interesting. Time changes. Heiser walked in the second, then doubled. RBI doubled in the third. On base both times that he's stepped to the plate. He's probably having a good day when the person last in your lineup is getting on base every time he steps to the plate. He's, uh, he's made it work, and that last base hit down the right field line was a killer for Seleski. Threw him a pretty good curveball. Right. This one will pop up. Right center field, tracking in his Witherspoon, and he will make the out. Top of the order will go. Luke Hamblin back in the first, grounded over to second, walked. And that's how Seleski pitches, you know. He pitches to contact, and when he's able to locate his pitches, put him in good places where you can't uh, square him up as well. He walked in the second, and it was an RBI because it was bases loaded walk. And then in the third, a base hit, so another RBI there. So two RBI day for the top of the order. So the bottom of the order getting on base and the top of the order getting RBIs, Ron. Yes, everybody's been on base except for Ryland Thomas. And one will follow this one back off. No balls, two strikes. No action in the two-lane bullpen. So for now, it is Seleski. Again, Sam Bion yelled. Started the game, two and two-thirds innings. Five hits, four runs, three earned, four walks, and a strikeout. Could have gotten out of an inning of only giving up one run. And Hunter Williams unable to field a throw from Hunter Hope, and that opened up the floodgates a bit. Four runs came in after that. Ron, a strike? Nah, that's off the plate. Uh, although Artigues tries to frame it up. That's an, an art of catching it and making it look more like a strike. 
you're always moving it in. You know, you'll even at times they'll catch the ball outside in the web. You'll catch it in the web to make it look like the glove is right on the corner. You do all these things. You work the ball in towards the strike zone as a catcher. This one's lined into right field. Solid shot there in the top of the order. will get on base. Luke Hamblin for the third time today. A walk, a single. And the third and another single here in the fifth inning. Eli Putnam now, the right fielder. He's also been on base, Ron, three times. A single in the first, a walk in RBI in the second, and a single in the third. Yeah, man. Well, that lineup puts the ball in play, and they'll keep the pressure on you unless you pitch to them, as uh, J.P. France did yesterday. Eli swinging in a miss there, and over on first base, Hamblin faked like he was going. Again, they've not really tested Artigue today. It was the France and Brown show yesterday without those two guys having great days. Over to first. Tulane was in trouble to begin with from UCF. Two runs, one hit in the second. Five runs, seven hits in the third. For the Knights this afternoon. Going to take this series... Again, won't play at home until May 18th. Here's the next pitch fouled off nice. just to our right. So it puts a jolt over into the production folks that run the scoreboard there. Uh, yeah, you always love to see people flinch. I mean, this, 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 <laughs> it, these are glasses You're not gonna and windows it. where they're not going to shatter, but we will flinch, right, when it comes in our direction. You know, it because it, um, it's pure glass, you know, you're getting to see that ball up close and personal. The 0-2, and it's popped up over to right, tracking it. Witherspoon is able to make the catch right before he makes contact with the wall there in the bleachers. And that will retire the side. So no damage done with the Luke Hamblin base hit. Going into the bottom of the fifth, the Green Wave are down six. Can it make any noise? We'll find out when we come back on the American Digital Network. We are American. The Conference of Opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. When it comes to learning at Tulane University, there are no boundaries. Architects and scientists in New Orleans, doctors and public health experts in Africa, history and language scholars in Latin America, legal students and professors in Europe, business students in Asia. Tulaneans are all over the globe, and the world is their oyster. We've got that, and a lot more, right here at Tulane University. Welcome back to Greerfield Turchin Stadium in New Orleans. The UCF Knights up 7-1 to one over the Tulane Green Wave. We mentioned, Ron, that for UCF, they will continue to be on the road here. They will take on Miami on Wednesday away from Orlando. Then at Cincinnati for next weekend's series play at Florida Atlantic and then host South Florida to wrap up the season. Lots of home games to begin the year, so they are playing their road games right now. And yes. for the two-lane green wave, Houston next weekend there right now looks like they will at least be in first place in the conference. They're trailing one nothing at UConn, but are up a game against Tulane right now in the conference standings. And the wave have a few more at-bats to try to come up with six runs as the first pitch over to Hunter Hope is low for a ball. Well, Got to get them in bunches yep. or I guess just slowly work your way in. Against a guy who's pretty comfortable. This is another day at the office for Joseph Sheridan. Um, he uh, it looks like a guy knows how to pitch with a lead, although, you know, he, he's missed with a couple here. I Surprised don't think, I don't being a freshman? Any... No. I mean, look at Seleski. It's sort of similar stuff, except they haven't asked as much of Seleski. But this guy's d done well. 3-2-1 three, three, ERA coming into this. That's 
in this conference. That's good stuff. That is got a couple stuff. of accolades here as well, Ron, uh, from what he did in his time in high school here. Two balls, one strike yep. over to Hunter Hope. Yep, Mat- uh, majoring in criminal justice. So he's not giving anything away, and you're not stealing anything from him. Uh, you and I did the ball game here on line back when the game one of the UConn series for – for the Tulane Green Wave, when they swept the UConn a team that was in pretty good shape at the time, had Swinging lost miss in the strike out there by Sheridan. Well, there you go. And and but in subsequent weekends, uh, Tulane lost two out of three at Houston, and then they lost two out of three at East Carolina, and they were still in good shape as this weekend series began because this is a. The, the parity in the American Conference, Athletic Conference, is astounding. But it's starting to separate. So this freshman pitcher, Sheridan, as he now faces Jake Wilsey, second baseman for the Green Wave, is behind in the count, one ball, no strikes. Named first-team all-conference Seminole County Player of the Year and Central Florida Player of the Year. Also at his high school run, all-time leader in wins, starts, and innings pitch, as you said, it is another day at the office. He's, he's been doing this for quite some time. Yeah, you know, he, he, he's been able to go out there in his freshman year and, and make good pitches. Um, he's got a sense of the edge of the plate. Inside corner there for a strike. You know, we and, always touch on the importance of Friday and Saturday starters in college baseball. And we tend to sometimes forget, I guess, fans, that Sunday game. And sometimes it can be rubber games of a series, but also the importance of just picking up that extra win. And, Ron, I bring that up because before we started, I I mentioned Tulane this season as this one's fouled over to the left side. They're one and nine on Sundays this year. And to the, I guess, the luxury for Coach, um, you know, love lady over there, um, for UCF is to, to have a guy on a Sunday that you know is going to go out there and give you a chance to win. That A, you pick up another win. Yeah. It can get you a sweep. It can win you a series. That's a, it's a lot. It's a pretty good luxury to have a guy that, you know, maybe he will be a Friday, Saturday starter for you, obviously. Yeah, I think knowing that your pitching was questionable coming in here, Trent Jewett looked at it, and he had uh, Ross Massey penciled in as his starter on the weekend. This could be grounded over to Bozeman, makes the play, and the Baton Rouge native makes it two out in the inning. Um, Ross Massey just struggled, a left-hander, a senior left-hander, and a guy that you thought could get you a little something, and he just, you know, look, he gave it what he has, but he had just something something went away. He used to be a command guy, right. um, um, Massey, but couldn't throw strikes and when you know it's you feel for a guy that uh, all of a sudden can't go out there and do what you've seen him do again and again and it 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 just all went downhill quickly and then so Sunday was was a vacuum and 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 yet for Tulane to be playing in the hunt and how they turned around a 2 and 12 run they had early in the season right to become relevant at least late into the American Athletic Conference uh, race is is astounding to me because these are some solid teams, and UCF is one of them. Cody Hosey, the shortstop for the Green Wave, flied out in the second inning, had a nice popped it up to the catcher. A nice talk with Ryan Klosterman, his uh, infield coach, assistant coach here. Actually, in his fifth season with UCF, a couple of years he played with the Zephyrs when we were the Zephyrs before mm-hmm. they became the Baby Cakes. But this is a shot over to left, but it'll be fouled. Guy that made the transition from professional baseball into college coaching. Out of Vanderbilt. So you know he's smart. They're all smart, right, to come out of Vanderbilt? You have to be smart. That's, that's what we hear. That's what we hear as this one is lined over in the left. The first hard shot over in the left was foul. He's straightening out this one. And Hosey gets on base. As Sheridan was 
just cruising along there. Yeah, it was a pretty good pitch. Two outs you know? here in the inning. All right, so they got five runs, UCF did, with two outs. Or four runs, I believe, with two outs. See if the two-lane green wave can get anything going here as Jonathan Ortiz, the catcher, steps well, up to the plate. I, I'm seeing... I'm seeing Joseph Sheridan continue to throw quality strikes up there. Uh, Hosey hit a quality strike. Uh, that didn't have to be uh, through the infield. Uh, he just put a good swing on it and squared it up pretty good. But I'm seeing a guy out there still throwing good stuff, good location. He's moving the ball around. He's doing what he was came as advertised, a guy that knows how to pitch. Adds and subtracts to a lot of his pitches. He's got some fade on his fastball. You know, he can run, let his fastball fade a little. He's got a cutter, slider thing, so he's adding and subtracting on his slider. This guy's pretty darn useful on Sunday or any day you want to pitch He'll him. come inside as Arteague squares around a bunt a pitch ago. Does it again? This one pops up. A bit surprised there with two outs? Well, no. I mean, in this situation, when you're down by six, and you need guys on base, I, that, and you have a runner at first, I'm like, look, this kid's um, a freshman who hadn't been banging the ball much. Why not try to bunt it down the third baseline if he's giving it to you? So I don't, I don't have any trouble with that. Sheridan, up until that base hit by Hose, he had retired nine straight hitters. So yep. as you said, he, w- he was moving right along, and he just hit the 60 pitch mark. By contrast, remember, Bjorniel was over 50 pitches in two innings. That's why he's no longer in the game. This one's going to be a chopper pass third, deep in the hole at short. The throw is not in time by Bozeman. Ron, I would imagine a hit there was placed perfectly deep into that area. Some back-to-back hits, just a well-placed ball there on that time. Yeah, when your catcher beats one out to short, you know it's a base hit. (laughs) But that was a great pitch. But look, this is quick turf. He takes it deep. On his backhand, and, um, you know, you're not going to make that play. So to the top of the order for the two-lane green wave comes Grant Witherspoon, the right fielder, ground out to short in the first inning, and the third, he grounded out to second. Again, you saw Ortiz put a pretty good pitch into play, probably not a strike. And that's what I've seen so much from Sheridan is he gets you to swing at iffy balls because of the movement on him. Lefty-lefty matchup here. The bottom of the fifth, it's a six-run lead for the Knights. And this one is hit over to right. The wind's trying to get it, but it will stay in the park and tracking it rather easily as Putnam, and that will retire the side. So in the inning, two base hits, but two runners left on base. And at the end of five, it's 7-1. to one. Knights over the wave on the American Digital Network. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. To see the dream of my child being realized. This has no price. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. The UConn Huskies won the tournament last year. They had a good start, Ron Sroboda. Gus Kattengill with you here as well. The conference tournament coming up around the corner. Just two weekend series remaining. Speaking with several people from both sides, UCF and Tulane side, they agree on one thing, Ron. It's anybody's conference tournament, they feel, this year. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think if you're a team that's maybe struggling to have the wins, hey, it gives you hope because at the end of the day, we know how it works. Win your conference tournament, you're in regional play. You're right. And, you know, mentioned before what an amazing comeback for Tulane to get it together and become relevant. Um, it's going to be a lot tougher if, if they walk out of here with an L uh, with only two weekends left. But... You know, you lost two out of three the last two weekends. So Tulane, who who was really headed for 
awfulness turned it around in a big way. But, you know, with the other quality you have um, in the teams at the top, in Houston, USF, South Florida. Bozeman. Um, and this club we're watching today, the Knights, as Bozeman grounds out. Yeah, hot shot over to Hosey, who retires him. Second pitch of the sixth inning here. Yeah, this is a tournament you're going to want to watch. That ball right out over the plate hit Beautiful hard. location, too, by the way. Yeah. Say that again. It's a beautiful location where they hold the oh tournament my. there. I don't know if you've ever been well, there. Just... College baseball is so much fun because these guys, they work so hard. You know, it's a tough job playing at this level in D1 and playing, you know, you're playing a serious program of baseball. And, oh, by the way, you're going to class and majoring in finance and business administration and all kind of relevant things. Well, Clearwater, Florida is not where everybody, the American but, Conference. But, uh, you know, that you have to go to class and make some grades right. or you don't get to play up and in. I don't think there was a thing but up and in on that one. No message. The foul ball here. One ball, two strikes in the top of the sixth inning. Seleski. Kids, uh, Thomas is interesting because as a freshman, I mean, this kid put together like uh, he's got compact power and a compact swing. Oh, baby. Where was it? It's on the outside corner. Where was it? Crowd here at Greerfield Church and Stadium wanted it. There's a whole lot of people going, where was it? Maybe just outside. I got no problem with the strike zone today. I think uh, we've seen a game. Fastball down the middle will be grounded over to Hunter Hope. Picks it up and in time across the diamond for out number two. Ryland Thomas. So Micah will come up to bat. Struck out looking in the fourth inning. Base hit and came around the score in the third run and in the first. Grounded out to third base. We touched on his speed already. We saw him tag up. That was another reason he came in and scored. Yeah, First pitch swinging, pops up over to right field. Witherspoon trying to make this a 1-2-3 inning by the line and makes the catch again just Once before again. the wall. So a 1-2-3 inning there by Seleski. Well, it's only been two innings. <laughs> the two-lane green wave pitching staff would like to let go. See if the bats can get going in the bottom of the six. 7-1 UCF on the American Digital Network. We are American. The Conference of Opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. When it comes to learning at Tulane University, there are no boundaries. Architects and scientists in New Orleans, doctors and public health experts in Africa, history and language scholars in Latin America, legal students and professors in Europe, business students in Asia. Tulaneans are all over the globe, and the world is their oyster. We've got that and a lot more right here at Tulane University. Folks taking advantage of an absolutely gorgeous Sunday afternoon. 81 degrees at the start of the game today, Ron. Low humidity. Not many days like this you can normally say here in the south, much less New Orleans as well. Orlando as well, right? The land of humidity and heat for the most part. It's just absolutely gorgeous. It's been unbelievable. Yeah, not many, as you call them, puffs of clouds, if at all. Gorgeous sunshine bathing here on this artificial surface. How, how many days have we had in New Orleans, other than the rain in the middle of last week where it's been starts out in the mid 60s with no humidity <laughs> and just a beautiful chamber of commerce day here's a pair of ground outs for lex kaplan third base and second base in the first and third inning the left fielder for the two lane green wave to lead off the bottom of the sixth here all right so you're starting to run out of outs here important to get on base no matter how you still got a few and and you know the challenge is if you somehow figure out how to get to Joe Sheridan, who doesn't seem Got to want to. Got out, nub. Play in time is, <laughs> no, pushed off the base. As Sheridan says, he got the side of the base. Yeah, I'd like to see that one again. First place umpire. 
Salgio Camantonio. That would be ruled an error if you missed the base, but the throw was in time. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. We see Ryland Thomas fielded it, tossed it ahead to Sheridan, and the umpire says he see. never stepped on the base. Well, he thinks he missed that near corner, and that's what... Uh, you see the umpire there having the conversation. Sal. With Greg Lovelady. Here's one more look, Ron, from the J side. Giacomo slow it down here. Yeah, Giacomo Antonio. The throw Ron. beats him, but... Yeah, he might have had a little bit of that corner, but from the angle, he didn't get well, it. So. There we go. Here's the old, let's have a conference here to see who saw what. So the umpires will have a meeting. Yeah, I don't know who could see it better than the first base umpire. Asia the Howard guy. Let's being see. asked. Watch the near corner. He's got the throw, and he thinks he probably brushed the side of it. You know, he's a side of the ball base. definitely beats he's not it and standing after, on the base, obviously. But after a conversation, all three umpires say safe. So Tulane will have the leadoff runner on Lex Kaplan. Here's the problem. Rule it a hit. Um, when when whenever you let the pitcher because of the way the play shaped up, a left handed pitcher always has a little more trouble getting the first. He was kind of late getting there. And the throw was late to him. And you, your eyes are on the ball to catch it. And, and that's when he sort of looked like he missed the base. If he stepped on the corner of the base, there's no problem. All right, so Hunter Williams, and again, not picking on the first base when he was 0 for 2 from the day. Just, you know how players are, probably still thinking about that play in the third inning. Julian could have gotten out of the inning, which have given up just one run with two outs, couldn't. Pick up a low throw by Hunter. Hope that skipped on him so at what you, first base, and so, four runs came in after. So what do you rule on that play? Is that an error on the pitcher? The throw was in time. They're calling it uh, an, indeed an error. Yeah. It is an error. Well, yes, yeah, you're right. E one by not touching it, swinging a miss mm. by Williams. Point I was bringing up. The play in which he was involved in that led to four runs later on by UCF is, you know, me, I'm sure he'd like to make do here with the swing yeah. of the bat. And to your point, Not as you mentioned, you a lot of times, just stay in and try to make a big inning rather than swing at a bad pitch. You, you, yeah, you can't be in a hurry against this guy. Well, he pops it up over to right, trying to make a run over his Micah using that speed. And he makes it over the shoulder catch and throwing the first, not in time. That's a heck of a play by Micah, the second baseman, because Putman, Ron, was playing deep. Yeah, he's real deep. And Micah got on his horse and showed that speed. I mean, he catches that pretty much in right field. Plus, he's got a thought in his mind. I'm going to make sure he's not messing around at first base. He turned and threw like he had a play at first. Yeah. He did not, but he turned and threw it like that. Garrett the heart. Now at the plate. Also, another tough pitch swung at. I haven't seen. Hunter Williams just has not swung at strikes today. 0 for 2. Or for two lanes designated strike. hitter. And he looks at the first pitch in there for a strike. And again, you, you, got, you cannot good not strike. be impressed by Joseph Sheridan here. Yeah. He works quick, Ron. The defense is on their toes because he's going to put the ball in play, but he locates it. It's just Look, you don't get good. Solid contact on the ball, I guess, is what you're talking about. You're just not seeing a lot of pitches coming through the happy zone in the fat part of the plate. You're just not seeing it. You go, another one just disappears, and you see a little frustration it's, there by DeHart. And again, this guy is a freshman and just, look, just you're chasing, a pitch. You're what coming you off it? a slider. Yeah, you're coming off a slider away. You're pulling off it, and and it's outside. So it's it's like he's he's fooling them, and and they're. Tulane is kind of helping a little bit, but I'll bet you if you watch this guy pitch against a lot of teams, you'll see a lot of this because I'm impressed with his ability to move the ball around, and he looks like he's a little tough to pick up. Um, all these things inure towards the benefit of a young freshman left-hander who's doing it. Look, he's 8-3 and three on the season, Ron, so he's obviously been doing this really well. 51 yes. strikeouts, 22 K uh, walks coming into the season. So, again, it just gives you an idea. Yep. What we're seeing today is what he's done all season. That's that's an unbelievable weapon to have as the throw to first almost there in time to 
helmet has to come off there. Wouldn't seem to, um, wouldn't seem to lead you, George. You know, if you're thinking about having a big inning, this isn't the kind of guy you have a lot Heck of big of innings on. Look at that move. <laughs> yeah. He did look like he was coming home, and that ball comes the, the first there. In a, in a half. But, again, it goes back to what I was saying with Love Lady. It, it's a weapon to have to know yeah. that on Sundays you're going to have a quality starter. He's going to keep you in it at the very least. Here's the pitch to the plate and swung on, popped up left field, tracking it is Marsh under it, out number two. DeHart has flied out the left field three times in this ball game, lefty to lefty. Get it in the second, in the fourth, and in the sixth. Again, pitch outside, went with it, and it's you're talking about there is no happy zone. It's tailing away from you, and you're just kind of getting something on it, and it yep. goes away. Yeah, it's not... It's not easy to hit a guy who can locate. Hey, Grant with Brown. Movement. Locating with movement is different than locating. You know, it, when, it's, when it's running one way or the other, and he's done a great job of that. The only guy, Grant Brown's had two good at-bats against him. I was going to say, he stuck with a pitch or stuck with a pitch in the right side of the plate, and he hit it for a homer. This one hits it on the button, but it one hops into Bozeman, who takes the easy out at second. To retire the two-lane green wave. 7-1 at the end of six on the American Digital Network. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. To see the dream of my child being realized. This doesn't have price. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When it comes to learning at Tulane University, there are no boundaries. Architects and scientists in New Orleans, doctors and public health experts in Africa, history and language scholars in Latin America, legal students and professors in Europe, business students in Asia. Tulaneans are all over the globe and the world is their oyster. We've got that and a lot more right here at Tulane University. Top of the seventh inning we go. Seleski still in there for the Tulane Green Wave. Ten hits, an error, seven runs for the Knights. A run on four hits and an error for the Tulane Green Wave as they continue to have action over in the bullpen for them. Sam Bionniel started the game two and two-thirds inning, five hits, four runs. Three of them are in four walks and a strikeout as Kyle Marsh will lead things off here for UCF here in the seventh inning, and he'll look at a strike right down the middle. We were talking about during the break there, uh, Joseph Sheridan, the work that he's been able to do. Again, all these series mean so much, and when you're still in contention to try to win the regular season title there and you have a logjam of teams, you got to get series. You got to pick up series wins on the road. The start that he's been able to give you already um, puts him definitely in the perhaps most valuable player category today. Uh, he's he's done a, such a solid job. And if if you look at uh, you know if you look at the way, the only really down note for this uh, UCF team is they got swept by South Florida. In a weekend series, a couple back as uh, Marsh almost inside out said here, and it looked like it was going foul, but found just enough space to land before the right field line. And Witherspoon had a little trouble with it. Whoops! Pardon me, double. Yep, Marsh will. That did look lead like off it should have been a there. foul ball, but it, it it sure did, right? It was inside Nobody out. Nobody was going to catch it, that's for sure. Witherspoon was playing more towards the gap. We have a pinch hitter here. Ryan Cryo. Looks like. Step in. Yep. For Bryce Peterson. Cryle's, uh, I think he plays against right-handers. Cryo will step in for Bryce Peterson, the designated hitter. And he will send one in the center. Brown tracking it calling it, and will have the first out of the inning. That's not piling on to pinch hit for 
a righty who didn't look like he was handling the right-hander, Seleski. Cam Gellinger, the third baseman, struck out in the second, had a double and an RBI in the third, and grounded out, or lined out, rather, over to left field. Yeah, he had a pretty good to left and field, the handled by, inning. by Kaplan there. They'd like to get another run, and in baseball, the clock's not going to save you. It's not going to run out. You don't know how many runs you need. Kyle Marsh over at second, and ground ball right at the pitcher. Seleski looked quickly to second, but decides to go to first. Didn't look at the runner at all, did he? He was maybe out of habit, or because <laughs> Marsh was gone on contact, and he makes his way over to third. But now two outs are away in the inning here. Solid contact, but right at it. Nice job by Seleski to field it. He took a quick glance and saw there was no one standing at the base. Yeah, he looked. At, he did look at second, uh, but the runner was going to third. Logan Heiser lines over to short. Grant Brown trying to get over it. Not going to get there in time as it drops. A run will score, and it's a double as Brown was on his horse from the very beginning. Again, Witherspoon, it's in the right field area, but Brown made the play out there. Yeah, there was no – even if he lays out, it's it's a tough ball to catch. A right-handed hitter drops it short right center. The only thing could have saved you was if you picked up that runner and threw him out of third base. And deep outfield and uh, just could not get it there in time. So another run comes in with two outs. I want to say run. That's the fifth run that has crossed the plate with two outs for UCF today. Pitch now over to Luke Hamblin has two RBIs on the day. Two well, hits as well for the center fielder of the night. And and I always feel like uh, And four at bats. Two out this RBIs. Is his fifth. If 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 you're giving up two out RBIs, they dent you more. They dent you more. Uh, Hosey gonna pick him off a second. Not only on the scoreboard, but you're talking about just emotionally. I think they dent you more because you're you're you know you start you know managers sometimes manage to get out of an inning and right. I'll just let me let this guy I don't want to take him out now let him get this last out and of course you give up three more and you're like <laughs> the manager's second guessing himself and everybody in the lineup is like oh, we had him but we couldn't put him away couldn't get that last out I just I just think if you're on the receiving end of two out RBIs it hurts more. Two balls, no strikes. Seleski facing Hamlin here, and it's fouled off to the back. Consequently, I always like to get them. I always like, you know, you're, you you like your team to get them because they, they value more in my book. You'll take them any way you can get them, any outs. I know all that stuff. They're all runs, but it's it's like two out RBIs when you really need them are golden. Pitch on the outside corner in there for a strike there. Seleski. Getting a little bit of help? Perhaps. <laughs> I think in, you know, eight to one ball games, the strike zone can get larger. Well played umpire Asa Howard may have somewhere to go. It's a nice day, Ron. Beautiful day. Same pitch, this time called a ball. Yeah, one was a changeup. Um, had a lot longer to look at it. <laughs> that was a fastball up and out of the zone. Three balls, two strikes over at second base. 12 hits, eight runs for Logan Heiser. UCF, four hits, one run for Tulane. Inside pitch, and it's swung on down the line into the gap. That'll be a double. That'll be another RBI as the Knights continue to put good swings on their plate appearances, Ron. I want to say that's four wow. or five doubles now in this game. Three in this inning. <laughs> I mean, <it's, laughs> yeah, and it a pretty a good, good – that's five at least. That's a pretty good pitch that Hamlin hit right there. That's, that, that is his third wow. RBI in this game. Yes. He's trying to give Sheridan a run for his money as player of the game as Coach Travis Jewett will make his walk over to the mound, and I think that will be it for Chase Seleski. We'll have a new pitcher for the two-lane green wave coming in on the mound.
It looks like Keegan Gillis. Keegan Gillis is going to be the new pitcher for the two-lane green wave here. As Seleski will exit, we'll give you some details on Gillis when we come back on the two on the American Digital Network. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. To see the dream of my son being realized. Isso não tem preço. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When it comes to learning at Tulane University, there are no boundaries. Architects and scientists in New Orleans, doctors and public health experts in Africa, history and language scholars in Latin America, legal students and professors in Europe, business students in Asia. Tulaneans are all over the globe, and the world is their oyster. We've got that, and a lot more, right here at Tulane University. Third pitcher of the day for the Tulane Green Wave is Keegan Gillis. Ron Sroboda, what do you got on him? Well, he's a right-hander, fastball, uh, 87 to 89, real good changeup. And a curveball straight over the top, what they call that 12 to 6 curveball, big tall boy. And uh, he's 6'8, 240. First from pitch New to Orleans. Putnam has popped up and fouled. Went to Brother Martin High School. His uh, ERA, a little on the large size, 6.67, 27 innings pitched, 35 hits. So. Fastball down and away. A guy that, uh, you know, he, he he's going to he's going to work the zone and, and and try to use all his pitches. Two for three is punting him on the day in a swing. He's a and freshman, fouls straight you know, back. A freshman out of uh, Brother Martin. You're going to see him around for a while. Putting him a single in the first, a single in an RBI. When I'm sorry, a walk in an RBI in the second and a single in the third. When you're 6'8", it's not hard to find you. It's very tall for a pitcher, and when he releases, he is Stepping on close you. to home plate. And a swing and a miss strike out there, so out of the pen. Gets the strike out to end the inning. Ron Swoboda, one, two, three doubles in the inning. Couple of runs as well. It is now 9 1 UCF. Two lane up to bat here in the bottom of the seventh on the American Digital Network. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. To see the dream of my son being realized. Isso não tem preço. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When it comes to learning at Tulane University, there are no boundaries. Architects and scientists in New Orleans, doctors and public health experts in Africa, history and language scholars in Latin America, legal students and professors in Europe, business students in Asia. Tulaneans are all over the globe, and the world is their oyster. We've got that, and a lot more, right here at Tulane University. Welcome back. 9-1 is your score. Seven innings almost complete here. The Green Wave getting a shot to 
That here in the bottom of the seventh. Business as usual. Ron Swoboda is what you said for Joseph Sheridan and Gus Cattengill. Ron Swoboda with you here on this Sunday. Rubber game of the series. UCF won Friday's matchup to Lane yesterday by a run in dramatic fashion. And today it's been a combination of some shaky pitching for the Green Wave. I'd, I'd say if you ask. And some you, solid hitting for UCF as well, but also the pitching of Sheridan has been really to help out as well. Hunter Hope, first pitch swinging over to center field for out number one, and that's something we've seen a lot today from Sheridan. Tulane attacking that first pitch, and it hasn't been a very hard hit ball. No, he, you know, they, I, I, I think you need to be a little more patient against a guy with the command of, of that may not save you. I'm saying that like it's easy to do, okay? I'm I'm not suggesting it's easy to do, but I'm saying you need to be a little more patient and make this guy throw you more quality strikes. Uh, well, to your point there, Jake away. Wilsey at the plate now for the two-lane green wave. The second baseman, a hit in the second and a ground up in the second, oh, uh, in a second plate appearance. First pitch to him was just on the outside corner for a strike. That's the thing. If you go up there and swing that one, it's... Probably going to be a pop-up the right field or well, weak grounded to the right side. It doesn't have to be anything, but like you said, the chances of putting in play hard are There's are a ground tougher. ball over to Bozeman. Easy. Oh, Picked nice it. pick over there by Ryland Thomas. <laughs> Bozeman almost short-armed it. Give a little hop, but uh, handled well by Thomas at first base. Looks like he just kind of let it go a little bit early. Yeah, good thing about this astroturf. True hops. You're gonna get a you're gonna get a pretty good hop. It was close enough to him, and uh, he didn't look too concerned. Uh, two quick outs here in the bottom of the seventh. Cody Hosey, the shortstop, he flied out in the second and got a base hit in the fifth. Seeing Sheridan for the third time today, and a strike in there again. Got an eight-run lead. And, Ron, only 78 pitches. If you're love lady, you're hoping that he gives you all the way to the ninth inning. And, again, you saw Hosey swing a pretty tough pitch. Might have been outer edge. But then, again, you know, the quality of uh, of this guy's strikes. He just, uh, he just doesn't make the hitters feel comfortable. There hasn't been the only guy that's looked comfortable up there today is uh, Grant Brown. He's been up there, gotten good pitches to hit, and made good swings on him. The 0-2 has popped up to short. Coming in quickly is Hamblin, and he tracks it down. A 1-2-3 inning. The ERAs, Ron Svoboda. We'll talk about that from the UCF pitching staff. We come back after 7. It's 9-1. Knights over the wave on the American Digital Network. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. To see the dream of my child being realized. This doesn't have a price. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When it comes to learning at Tulane University, there are no boundaries. Architects and scientists in New Orleans, doctors and public health experts in Africa, history and language scholars in Latin America, legal students and professors in Europe, business students in Asia. Tulaneans are all over the globe, and the world is their oyster. We've got that and a lot more right here at Tulane University. But Joseph Sheridan definitely doing the work for the UCF Knights. Gus Cat and Girl, Ron Sroboda back with you here. They lead 9-1. to one. Ron Sroboda, Joseph Sheridan, 3.21 ERA coming into this game. Chris Williams, 3.23. Robbie Howell, 3.44. And Juan Pimentel, 3.70. Your top four pitchers, those are your ERAs. That's pretty good. From That's a good stat. <laughs> That's and, a good you stat. Know, and, and you beat the best of them on Saturday in this series. So
Bozeman will lead things off here in the eighth inning. First pitch to him is in there for a strike as Keegan Gillis. Third pitcher of record for the Tulane Green Wave came in for Chase Selesky. And for who came in for the starter, Sam Bionyeld. Two and two-thirds innings, five hits, four runs, three earned, four walks, a strikeout for him. For Selesky, four innings of work, four runs. They were earned, eight hits, had a strikeout. As again, the second and third inning, the innings that Tulane pitching would like to forget in that second inning, it was four walks, two of them with the bases loaded. They got two runs there. Tulane continues to see action over in the bullpen here as Gillis has a 3-1 count, and it's fouled off to the right side for a foul. And then also, Ron, you looked at that third inning. They... It the Knights a, got a run, and then you had two outs, and then an error led to four runs as kind of the gates opened up here. It's a line shot over to Kaplan, who didn't have to move at all for an out. Hit well, but right at him. And I'll tell you what, the quality of contact, if you just judge this series on the quality of contact, it's not close, um, and it's... UCF, who's probably done a much better job of squaring up balls and hitting them hard. They hit some balls hard yesterday in that one-run loss. This one is a rip down the left side as well for a base hit. And talking about the quality of that bats and contacts, it's a stark difference, isn't it? Against Sheridan, the ball is being put in play. But, Ron, they look a lot different than the UCF at bats right now. Well, it's a lot easier to play defense when that ball isn't coming at you like a rocket. And there's men all over the bases. Um, it makes a difference, obviously. And it, it's funny. You, you know, you're, you're, you're seeing a UCF team that's uh, pretty darn impressive. And they're on the come. And here. here's another hit over to left field. Back-to-back -back singles over to left and run. Runners in first and second. Doesn't take much or doesn't take long for the... This I team to get going. I think the Knights are trying to tell Tulane they're not finished with you yet. Kyle Marsh now, the left fielder. Walk in the second. Fly out twice in consecutive innings in a third and fourth over to right field. Had a double and scored in the seventh just an inning ago. Yeah, he swung the bat pretty good. This pitch to him is line outside for a ball. Just try a curveball after two fastballs got hit right on the nose. The Knights on the season, 32-15, and 15, and this is a rocket into the stands. Look out. You can hear it bouncing around into the chairs there. Really? I tell you, one in the section, 110 over there, and there's a bunch of people there, backs turned to home plate. It's lucky that it actually hit that top row of seats because that was a rocket. That should have at least gotten some attention down there. They didn't even turn the around, point. and I, I guarantee you it would have been some EMS attention. Well, they're discussing weighty issues, you know, politics and uh, what's happening in the world today. You know, these are young and aspiring leaders sitting at a ball game. Maybe there I'm, it is. You see just at the top of the picture there, those people standing up all had their backs turned right behind the lady with the umbrella. They're not students. <laughs> yeah. One ball, two Whoops. strikes here, and it's outside. Trying to create a scenario there that uh, didn't exist. <clears throat> Runners on first and second. Matthew Micah on first. Ryland Thomas over on second. Kyle Mars trying to knock him back in. The ball's in the dirt and it gets away from Artigues, and both runners will advance. And Artigues, not the normal two lane catcher. That is Paul Gazzo. Took a foul tip into the chin back on Friday. He's undergoing concussion protocol. Yeah, that's a wild pitch. Um... Ortiz got his body in front of it, but uh, it ricocheted off of him. That's a tough ball to handle under any circumstances. Wild pitch for sure. 
3-2 pitch is swung on and lined down the left field. Foul. They got to stay out of inside with this guy. <laughs> I think he's already shown you can handle your fastball I down I mean, just in. an inning ago, Ron, UCF had three doubles. You take those doubles with two and a third. That's five on my scoreboard. Yeah. That scorecard that I have that are doubles. <laughs> when you have to pause to see just how many doubles a team is hitting, it kind of gives you an idea of the kind of afternoon they've had today. As action continues in the two-lane bullpen. I don't know that they've ever had a four, a five-double game. The last time they had a four-double game was against Tulane in 2010. Popped up over to short uh, center. Brown fields it, tagging at third, and scoring will be Ryland Thomas. Good at that. So an RBI by Kyle Marsh there on the flyout Back center. Fly? Yeah. Sacrifice fly for out number two. And that'll bring in double digits. Ryan Cryle. <laughs> but before that, Coach Jewett's going to go to the mount, to the bullpen and we'll have another two-lane pitcher, number four on the day. That's Coach Jewett. Didn't have to go to the pin yesterday. J.P. France, eight innings. The starter gave them plenty of innings. Keegan Gillis exits. We'll tell you the new pitcher is when we come back on the American Digital Network. We are American. The Conference of Opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. To see the dream of my son being realized. This doesn't have a price. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When it comes to learning at Tulane University, there are no boundaries. Architects and scientists in New Orleans, doctors and public health experts in Africa, history and language scholars in Latin America, legal students and professors in Europe, business students in Asia. Tulaneans are all over the globe, and the world is their oyster. We've got that and a lot more right here at Tulane University. Pitcher number four on the afternoon for the Tulane Green Wave in on the mound. Ron Sroboda, it is Ross Massey. Yeah, fastball, curveball change. Fastball, you know, mid to upper 80s. 779 ERA. It's been a rugged road for Ross Massey this year. First pitch is a strike. Austin Griffin. Pinch hitting for UCF. Austin Griffin. Massey, a sophomore, was kind of penciled in as the... Griffin, the third player to bat in this position on the lineup. Bryce Peterson opened up. Ryan Kryles was next. Now Austin Griffin. In the Yeah, with the, the left-hander coming right? in there. He's got some... He's got some lefty-righty he can do in that slot. Here's the pitch on the outside corner, swing and a miss. So wow, you hear the crowd, Ross Massey likes to see, or the crowd likes to see Ross Massey come out. Fastball, get strike a three. quick strikeout and retire the side. In the inning, they do get another run. And the two-lane green wave are down to six outs. 
Bottom of the eighth, coming up next on the American Digital Network. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. De ver o sonho meu do meu filho sendo realizado. Isso não tem preço. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When it comes to learning at Tulane University, there are no boundaries. Architects and scientists in New Orleans, doctors and public health experts in Africa, history and language scholars in Latin America, legal students and professors in Europe, business students in Asia. Tulaneans are all over the globe, and the world is their oyster. We've got that, and a lot more, right here at Tulane University. Bottom of the eighth inning, it is a nine-run lead for UCF. Three RBIs by Luke Hamblin and a solid performance by Joseph Sheridan. Gus Cattengill, Ron Svoboda back with you here as it looks like his afternoon is done. Having done his job, Sheridan, seven innings pitched, a run, it's earned, four hits, three strikeouts. Ron Sabota on 80 pitches. That's what you want to do. Juan Pimentel wow. will take over for him. Pimentel, believe it or not, was listed as the long man in this game. And, of course, the long man is like Seleski for Tulane. If things go awful in the beginning and you got to lift your starter early, he was the guy scheduled to get the ball. He's a senior out of uh, Miami. Indian River Junior College uh, to uh, UCF was his route to this point in time. He's a guy with uh, fastball, 87 to 90, a pretty good changeup and a slider to go with that. First pitch to Jonathan Ortiz, the two-lane catcher for the Green Wave, who's one for two for the day. There for a swing and a miss for a strike. Outside part of the plate. Down the line, first base foul. Start him off with a slider, and it's foul. Artigues hit came in the fifth inning over the left field. Also grounded out to shortstop in the third. Artigues has a base hit in this one, so he helps himself a little this year. And uh, what's become a... 10 to 1 route. Ball outside for the Green Wave. No midweek games. The next time they step onto the Diamond Run will be right here to close out the home schedule weekend wise against Houston. Yep. Then they will take on UNO on Tuesday and then finish out the season at Memphis. This is a ball down the right field line and foul over the bullpen area. Wow. Looked like he threw him a changeup. Houston Cougars this afternoon in a battle 3-3, top of the eighth inning, taking on UConn. And they have a one-game lead on both of these teams. And ECU and USF, it is a final. The Bulls win 6-3, to three, so they add to their American Conference lead. This is a short chop of the third coming in, having to hustle in time is Gellinger. Nice play. Indeed, by the third baseman, Ron. Yeah, really good play. Got a catch and throw. Get rid of it. Handled well by the first baseman. Throw right there. Top down the third baseline. RT, not a big jump out of there. Not Didn't a burner down he the line. He used the glove, too, and got it out there in time. Heck of a stretch. He was still hopping when he got to it, so you're probably a little smarter to use the glove. Maybe he's thinking, I got a catcher running right. here. And Ryland Thomas showing his stretching ability there. This will bring up Tyler Hendricks. Pinch hitting for Grant Witherspoon. It's the uh, 13th appearance. Pimentel has started 11 games for them. Just pitched the other night. Two balls, no strikes to Hendricks. During the week. So 
So this works as... Um, Henrik's 216 on the season. This is like a, um, you know, like a between start workout for Pimentel, who is a weekday starter for him. Probably something of that nature here because Sheridan was moving along. You have a nine-run lead. This is maybe to give some time uh, on the mound for him as he throws four straight balls over to Hendricks. It's this or a bullpen. So he will go on over to first base. That will bring up Kobe Owen. Pinch hitting for Lex Kaplan. So coach Travis Jewett, back-to-back players off the bench, giving them some at-bats, Ron. I think that's what it's about. First pitch to him is outside corner for his strike. So USF, they won. They improved to 12-6. and six. Houston tied right now. They're 11 and 6 going into this game. UCF and Tulane into this afternoon's game, both at 10 and 7 in conference play. So when fouls is over to the right side in an attempt to snag that, the gentleman in the Tulane shirt missed it. That wasn't Mike Johnson, was it, of the Greenbackers? He got it off the, the ricochet, though. So do you still give him credit? He missed it on the initial catch. It hit the chair behind him, and on the ricochet, he did grab it. Proof is in the pudding, and the pudding's in his hand. There you go. He's doesn't matter, it. doesn't matter how ball. you got it, right? Yeah, in, in the stands, just get the ball. The 0-2 pitch. Where was that? Coach Lovelady would like to know that, and the UCF fans. Ron, a better look at it. Yeah, well, borderline. Put uh, Heiser down low on it. Sometimes you can be too low. The one, two. Low again. Two balls, two strikes. The first year head coach of these UCF Knights is, of course, Greg Lovelady, and he's a former catcher. Outside corner called it a strike. Mm -hmm. That that OBO and not. Didn't look as close as the one he called a ball. Two pitches ago, but let's see. Starts outside and well run. Wow. It Zone got big, didn't it? Stays outside. I told you it's a beautiful day. Home plate umpire, Asia Howard. Have, has some nice dinner plans outside, perhaps on a deck, on a patio, maybe. Close a barbecue. Enough. Close enough for a 10 to 1 game. Thank you. Hunter Williams <clears throat> at the plate. A ground out, a strikeout, and a fly out for his afternoon today. Oh, for three. First pitch to him outside corner. Call strike. No doubt about that. Came into the game batting 350, now down to 345 on the season. Inside. He picked up over my mic. Uh, Got Bozeman, rather, and he throws him out over at short. Beautiful play. Deep short picked it up and got him there in time. So Tulane done in the eighth. Ninth inning action coming up next. 10-1 UCF on the American Digital Network. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. To see the dream of my son being realized. This doesn't have a price. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When it comes to learning at Tulane University, there are no boundaries. Architects and scientists in New Orleans, doctors and public health experts in Africa, history and language scholars in Latin America, legal students and professors in Europe, business students in Asia. Tulaneans are all over the globe, and the world is their oyster. We've got that, and a lot more, right here at Tulane University. We played eight innings in UCF looking to stay pace and keep pace with the South Florida Bulls setting up, Ron, what will be a very interesting season finale series. 
at Central Florida. They will host oh. USF. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the issue will not be settled by what happens here today. I mean, you either make your chances better or worse. UCF has obviously made their chances better, but uh, and Tulane the opposite, but it's going to be an interesting finish. Massey back on the mound for the Tulane Green Wave. Came in last inning, faced a batter, and got a strikeout. I'd like to see him. Uh, Austin Griffin, Cam Gellinger. Scheduled to bat, and it looks like they have made pinch hit, and it's Brooks Morgan. Getting a plate appearance. Tried to check his swing and could not. So Brooks Morgan batting 250 on the season, Ron. So both coaches getting some plate appearances for some players off the bench. And might as well have gone and swing at that one as Massey delivers here right down and low. That's Three balls and a strike. Some of what we saw early in the year when, when Ross was just struggling with his command and his velocities were down. You wondered if he was hurt. And a swing and a miss. No, fouls it off. And you really want to see a guy like that solve it. He's a sophomore. He could do you a lot of good if he's the guy. Ron, he was he was solid a, a year ago. Yeah, he was a whole lot different pitcher. That pitch is inside for a ball. Lead-off walk will bring in catcher Logan Heiser. Number 17, Max Wood, for the St. Sarah. Who will be lifted for a pinch hitter. Max Wood. So, Max Wood now will head on over. As Ron Sarboda will start to make his way down here shortly. Luke Hamblin. Perhaps we'll hear from him. Also, Joseph Sheridan of Coach. Of course, Coach Greg Love Lady. Following the game. As leadoff walk. And Brooks Morgan has him over at first as Massey. It's even up here, one ball in the strike. Max Wood, and the pitch is outside for a ball. Two balls in the strike. Outside corner. Not close enough, so it'll be another ball. So three and one, and to Ron's point, it's kind of been the issue with Ross Massey this season. Trying to find that strike zone and held on to that ball a little bit too long that time, so back-to-back -back walks. Well, bring it. The Knights back to the top of the order here. Luke Hamblin. Center fielder's had a busy day. Grounded out to second in the first, then a walk and an RBI because it was the bases loaded. Then a hit and an RBI in the third. Then a hit in the fifth, and then a RBI double in the seventh. Hamblin looking to do some more damage. First pitch to him is right down the middle for a strike. No outs here in the top of the ninth inning. 10-1 to 1, UCF with the lead. Hamblin sees the next pitch in the dirt for a ball. So one ball, one strike. Got Brooks Morgan over at second and Max Wood over at first. Massey delivers inside for a ball. Both teams active over in the bullpen for the Green Wave, a right-hander. A 
And that ball is called there for a strike. Two balls, two strikes, and I wouldn't even really call it warming up just yet for UCF. In the process of eventually getting ready to warm up, it looks like. Jordan Shepherds. On the mound is Massey. Two balls, two strikes, and that one bounces in front of the plate. And that's been the problem with Massey this year, folks. You can see when it's starting to bounce in front of the plate, it's trying to aim it a little bit too much, that release point, holding on to that baseball just a little bit too long. Here's a 3-2. Ground ball over to Hosey. Willsey to second for one and not in time to Williams for the double play at first. So they do get the force out at second. Morgan gets over to third. Hamblin will reach on a fielder's choice over to first base. Do get one out and a double play can get you out of this inning. Eli Putnam. Two for four on the afternoon. Now he steps up to the plate against Massey. First pitch for him is outside corner in there for a strike. 326 on the season. Putnam's last pace appearance, a plate appearance, seventh inning strikeout in the seventh. This one grounded into deep, short, backhanded by Hosey. Play across the diamond, and it's in between first and second. It'll go all the way to the wall. One run is in and on the throw to nowhere. The runner will make his way all the way to second in Putnam. So Hamblin will go to third. And Morgan will score. As Brennan Bozeman will now come in. Got to say that is an error. On the shortstop, Hosey, as he backhanded it and just kind of threw it in between second and first, and the ball hit the dirt. And feels slightly in over on the right side. I guess trying to cut off the play at the plate here as Massey's pitch is inside over to Bozeman. One for five on the day. That one was a big one in the third inning. It was a hit. It was an RBI hit. Other than that, a fly out, a ground out, a ground out, and a line out. For Bozeman, lots of at-bats for these UCF hitters today. He fouls this one straight back. So runners on second and third. 11 to 1 your score now here in the type of the ninth inning. Knights with one across the plate in this one. Bozeman trying to add more. Ground ball over the second. Diving play by Wilsey. Looking to throw at home and he's got... Someone in the pickle, and they do tag in time. Hamblin for the second out in the inning. And again, credit Wilsey, who made a great play over at second. Solid hit over there. Got it right off that short hop. Ran towards the runner. Threw at home out in front of, the, of Hamblin. And then the quick throw over to Hope with the quick tag. As Wilsey... Solid play for the second out of the inning. I'll bring up Ryland Thomas, who swings in the miss over to Massey. So still 11 to 1. Runners on first and second now. Outside for a ball, Coach Jewett trying to get Massey some work again, as Ron and I were discussing earlier. Massey just an outstanding season his freshman year and just trouble finding the strike zone this year. That one high and outside. Seems uncomfortable with this release point. Nothing wrong with him injury-wise. Just unable to find sort of stuff in control that had him having an outstanding freshman season last year. This has popped up. Williams trying to make a run on it, and the first baseman indeed makes the grab right in front of the UCF dugout and the steps leading down into the dugout. 
Solid play for the first baseman there. Another run comes across, though. 11-1, wave down to three outs on the American Digital Network. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. To see the dream of my son being realized. This is not a price. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When it comes to learning at Tulane University, there are no boundaries. Architects and scientists in New Orleans, doctors and public health experts in Africa, history and language scholars in Latin America, legal students and professors in Europe, business students in Asia. Tulaneans are all over the globe, and the world is their oyster. We've got that, and a lot more, right here at Tulane University. Jordan Shefferts is a new pitcher for the Knights as the Tulane Green Wave are down to their final three outs. Getting a run there in the top of the ninth inning. And I butchered that with his Jordan Chefs. No apologies. Short Jordan Chefs. The new pitcher for the Knights. As the Knights just arm after arm after arm. Chefs 193 ERA on the season. 1-2 win-loss record. Disappeared in 21 games. 23 and a third innings pitched. 33 strikeouts. A chance to get some work here. You hear the applause, and that is for the next batter, and that is Jeremy Montabano, who had an injury to his ankle earlier in the season and has kept him out of plate appearances and basically can swing. It's really about it from what I'm being told. First pitch to him is in there for a strike. Stick with us after the game. Ron Sabota is down on the field. Second pitch to him. Pop up into center. Making its way over to right. And it will be tracked down and caught by Putnam. As Grant Brown will step up to the plate. Ron Sabota will do a recap and have interviews. Getting plenty of ECF nights to choose from today. Joseph Sheridan, an outstanding performance on the mound for UCF and also some good hitting. Plenty of RBIs to choose from. Brown pops it up over to Matthew Micah and just like that, too quick. Out to the inning and Hunter Hope. The last hope for the two-lane green wave. As Hope will be lifted for a pinch hitter. As again, both coaches trying to get some at-bats to some folks. And Matt Rowland getting an at-bat for the green wave. First pitch to him is a ball. Next pitch in there inside for a strike. The next weekend series for Tulane is Houston here at Griffield Church Stadium. No midweek game for UCF. It's at Miami on Wednesday, followed by at Cincinnati. Again, all setting up for that final weekend series. That should be a lot of fun over in Orlando as the South Florida Bulls defeated ECU 6-3 to today. Remain at least a game ahead of UCF, barring a... Miracle here, winning this game to improve themselves in the conference standings. 12 wins. Coming into today's game, USF and Houston 11-6 in conference play. 
Pitch to Rowland in there for a strike. UCF in Tulane, 10 and 7. Now Houston trailing 7 3. So they look like they will probably drop to 11 and 7. And that will do it as the strikeout ends the game. A solid performance by the Knights. They win the series. Friday night. Where do you think we ought to be? And. They improved to 33 and 15 on the season and 11 and 7 in conference play. When we return, Ron Strobota live on the field will have a recap and interviews on the American Digital Network. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. To see the dream of my son being realized. This doesn't have a price. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When it comes to learning at Tulane University, there are no boundaries. Architects and scientists in New Orleans, doctors and public health experts in Africa, history and language scholars in Latin America, legal students and professors in Europe, business students in Asia. Tulaneans are all over the globe, and the world is their oyster. We've got that, and a lot more, right here at Tulane University. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. To see the dream of my son being realized, this doesn't have a price. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When it comes to learning at Tulane University, there are no boundaries. Architects and scientists in New Orleans, doctors and public health experts in Africa, history and language scholars in Latin America, legal students and professors in Europe, business students in Asia. Tulaneans are all over the globe, and the world is their oyster. We've got that, and a lot more, right here at Tulane University. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. Access to traditional prosthetics for kids is challenging. At Luminous, my goal is really to give them a chance to chase their dreams and to instill confidence so that they can go after whatever they want. To see the dream of my son being realized, this doesn't have a price. The labs at UCF were so instrumental. I couldn't be in a better place. This is where I call my home. When it comes to learning at Tulane University, there are no boundaries. Architects and scientists in New Orleans, doctors and public health experts in Africa, 
history and language scholars in Latin America, legal students and professors in Europe, business students in Asia. Tulanians are all over the globe, and the world is their oyster. We've got that and a lot more right here at Tulane University. Welcome back to New Orleans. Final score, UCF 11, Tulane 1. As the Knights improved to 33-15 and 15 overall, 11-7 and 7 in conference play. And part of the main reason, Joseph Sheridan, starting pitcher for the Knights. Seven innings pitch, four hits, a run. It was earned. No walks, three strikeouts. Our Ron Sroboda is with the pitcher that only needed 80, Ron, to take care of business this afternoon. Thank you, Gus. Well, I'll tell you what. If you watched a little bit of this, you saw... UCF get a couple of runs and um, after a tough loss yesterday made this game all the more important they put a freshman on the mound who's been doing it for him all year long Joe Sheridan he wins his ninth game of the year you were as comfortable out there as I could have imagined a freshman tell me how you felt on this turf mound something you're not always going to pitch off of oh uh, yeah it's a really nice surface and getting that early lead really helps it's a very good offense they swing it really well they swung it well all weekend so uh, they were pretty aggressive, and it helped me out, but I thought it went well. A lot of guys can go out there, and uh, they get a, a lot of runs, and uh, it's not always easy to pitch. You have a big inning, uh, five-run third inning, and uh, you sat for a long time, went out there like nothing happened. Yeah, it definitely wasn't easy. That's a very good offense, but uh, I made pitches when I had to, and I got the job done. You're a guy that, you know, you can pitch to the edges, use all your pitches. You, you, you seem to have an awful lot of finesse and nuance for a guy uh, who's a freshman in, in this D1 baseball thing. You, I, have you always been that kind of pitcher? Uh, I try my best to be, but I, I never do any. I never try to be anything but myself, and it always works out well. So I was glad with how it went today. How how does this day, since this is the only time I've ever seen you pitch, I saw an awful lot of two lane hitter swing and that less than attractive looking strikes, and some of them out of the strike zone on the first pitch early in counts. You get guys to swing at balls that are edgy, a little uh, you know suspect for early strikes. That's all That's all we try to do in pitching, just deception and trying to make every pitch look the same, and then right at the end it'll change up on him. So uh, I did a good job of that today. Hey, this conference race is getting pretty interesting, and uh, you guys got a little bit of work to do with two more weekends. A lot of good teams in the conference, and obviously Tulane's still not out of it. They're a very good team, and they'll be able to make their way up in the next two weeks, but uh, it's going to be a fun race at the end. Well, that's 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 fun for you guys. If you're a coach, it's probably an ulcer somewhere in there. But uh, Joe Sheridan, really good work today. You looked as comfor comfortable as you could be. There was one hitter, Grant uh, Brown, who hit the the one home run, the run, one run you gave up in seven innings. The only guy that really got good, consistent swings against you all day. Yeah, he swung it well all day. I was actually very impressed. He swung it well all weekend, actually, and yeah. we knew he was going to be a challenge coming into the day, and he still swung it well. and. Besides that one that went over the fence, he just happened to find fielder, so it worked out well. You pitchers watch that stuff. It's, uh, it's a good idea to do it. Yeah. Well, Joe Sheridan, um, again, great work today, and thanks for spending a little time with us. Uh, go Knights. Charge on. You got it. Thanks. Take care, man. That is Joe Sheridan, man. I'll tell you what, that's as tidy an effort as you're going to see from a freshman or anybody else with a baseball in their hand on the mound. There is Ron Sabota. Thanks as always. We appreciate you for joining us this afternoon. The Knights now 11 and 1 is the score. 33 and 15 on the season. 11 and 7 in conference play for Tulane. 23 and 26. 10 and 8 in conference play. The next weekend series for the Wave. It's Houston for UCF. It's at Cincinnati. As always, we appreciate you for joining us here on the American Digital Network. So long and have a great Sunday evening, everybody.